I didn't see anything else that oh, I didn't eye, either. Besides, these, other, besides yeah. these letters. Uh, 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 and let's see the layout, can we? Oh, the layout was, yeah. So there will be, tell, talk to me about the entrance and the exit, if you would. Sure. So the entrance is going to be um, on Hudson Street. It's at the corner um, of DeBrosis, Hudson, and Canal. Um, it's going to be a vestibule that you walk into, and then a second set of doors that you walk into the space. And there, uh, 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 is there a side door? Is there a uh, uh, where people can enter or? I don't believe so. I don't see a side door. If, if you're referring to something, I'm I'm not exactly sure. Okay. Okay. Susan, point of clarification. So we're saying um, Monday through Thursday is 12 a.m. closing, and then Friday and Saturday is one, and then Sunday is 10. Yes. Okay. Yes. And there's only recorded music. Uh, you'll deal with your garbage collection since you have a uh, 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 people around there. We we make sure that the you know this is residential, and uh, we're concerned about that. Our garbage is is stored inside. It's only picked up um, when the rest of the block is picked up. Uh, uh, other than the fact, I mean, uh, you said that, I'm sorry, the, uh, the numbers occupancy numbers are changed. They, it, this is not correct, right? The PA, yes, the PA capacity is, it's only going to be 74 and we could submit an amended page. 74. Yeah. Okay. So it won't go into large venue. Other than that, uh, everything else looks fine. Okay. So, um, uh, I now have some, um. And this menu, the way I understand you described it is going to be changing. This is like a, a, to have guest chefs on a some kind of basis. Am I correct then? There's a group of chefs and, and yes, they each kind of take a turn, but you know, if one is working out, they keep it on for as long as possible. So we have some people from, uh, uh, um, from the community who would like to uh, speak. So Onesh, will you? Uh, please I see Tammy's uh, hand up too, just so you know. Okay, uh, well, let's, let's, let's Tammy get Tammy first. first. Yes, I want to make sure and, and everyone to understand this is a different application because this is from the restaurant downstairs. It's not to be, uh, a, it is the owners of the people who are upstairs, but we need to make sure that we are holistically looking at each application. So, comments yes. that are made are made for each application and we're not muddying one for the other. Right. So, Tim, you're saying there's two applications here for beer, wine, and cider, two separate ones. No, so I could actually. No, it a bit no. Better. So they're this not. Is no. This is the ownership is of the rooftop. It, it is of the same ones that is are it? going to come up for Debrosis later. I so correct right. later, but oh, this is one. this is a different one. This is for the restaurant, Got it. which is a different venue than the large venue on the rooftop and the new addition they are requesting. Okay. Right. Am I correct, Ben? You are absolutely correct. This is a separate OP. And I just want to say that that Matt from our team is on and he did do outreach to neighbors if you want him to speak to that. No, I don't at the moment. No. I want to allow I, I could speak to that as well. Well that's fine, but I don't uh uh, uh we I have to hear from the community. I want to hear from the community. Okay, Justin, you go ahead. All of you uh that uh, the people who uh, did petitions, I believe, Onesh, uh, mm -hmm. Justin is one of them. There's some others. Uh, 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 and, and again, uh, uh, I think Tammy's point is uh, uh, well taken uh, um, that um, although Mr. Riley uh, operates the rooftop, uh, this is a different, uh, uh, this is within the same area. Um, and there is a concern here for traffic and smoking. 
and uh, we didn't discuss that with you, Ben, that are there going to be, is there going to be some form of security uh, around this restaurant and some form to not have people be smoking uh, in the area where people are living? This is, the people do live around here. Are you there, Ben? Onesh? Ben? I wonder if it's, uh, 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 yes, I'm back. If, if, are there going to be any buyouts? So, to answer yeah. Susan's question first, um, there's no security for the space. It's a restaurant. It has a low occupancy of 74. There is security on the block from the other space. And they are outside often, but they're not responsible for for managing this space and the security there. I'm sure that they can get somebody there if you think it's appropriate. But again, it's a it's a sit down restaurant. I'm not so sure that they need security. As far as smoking, there's really no plan for that either. I think if there was an issue with smoking, they would tell people to go around the block to Canal Street. Um, there's no neighbors directly above them. The neighbors are across the street. Um, and if I'm sure if they saw anybody smoking, they would have a policy of telling them to go around the street to Canal. Yeah, I see that could possibility as a problem if you have a buyout. Are you having any kind of buyouts? I don't believe that there's going to be any private events for this space outside of what restaurants normally do if somebody wants to have a birthday party or something. If somebody really wants to have a private event, I'm pretty sure they're going to go to Tribeca Rooftop instead of the Chefscape restaurant. Well, we're going to, we would say that we don't expect you to have any private, uh, 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 right. Wait a minute. Okay. In yeah, our stipulation. Put that in the stipulation. Yes. Oh, I mean, Billy, Billy, you're on. You can answer that question. Are you saying that they can't have somebody have a, a birthday party there? They can't have. No, we're not saying that. You know what, exactly what we're saying. And Tammy has. Right. It's just, it's limiting the number of full buyouts where it becomes more of an event space than it is a restaurant. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm sorry to jump in. If, if if we go back to the 205 steps, the 205 stipulations that were actually approved by you guys in 2019, it expressly limited the number of buyouts because, you know, we can get into this later, but they're trying to include a quote flex space. And that's the other half of the 75, the 150 capacity. The other half of this space they plan to use as a quote flex space for private events. So the sole purpose That's of a flex space for private events. I don't know what is it's not That's private events. Part of this, I appreciate the point, but it's not part of the chef's gate application. Yeah. That's it's separate. Not, it is. It's not, we don't not part it. of the chef's space. Everybody stop. Stop, stop, stop. Please. And everybody has They're to speak one at a time. Guys. Well, I'm going to ask a question, Justin. Let me ask the question. So the other That's half the of this space, Ben, or bra, whoever wants to answer, what do you intend to do with this other half of the space that is an attachment or it has access to the restaurant? Am I correct? It does not have access to the restaurant. It is item number six on your agenda tonight. That's what I thought. Okay. I just want us to be very clear. I mean, Tammy was very clear before everybody and I want you all I, I, I'm not saying we don't have problems, but this is for a restaurant. This is very, very specific, and I don't want us to mix one with the other at this moment. All right. So um, this is for the chef's scape where they're going to have uh, meals and once in a while we, we will limit uh, them to uh, uh, the kind of what people call buyouts um, at, in our stipulation. But this, I understand, is in a restaurant. You are correct. And Susan, I'm looking at the 2019 steps, and there is a, um, a cap on the number of buyouts, and we'd, we'd be willing to agree to the exact same thing. Well, I, but we just agreed oh, yeah. that you're not going to have any buyouts there because that is a restaurant, a sit-down restaurant. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> no, 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 I'm saying what I said before was well, uh, they want to have a birthday party or, or somebody who wants to use the space for a birthday party. Yeah. A birthday party. I give, them a, birthday... A okay. I give them a couple. I give them a couple. A year. I give them a couple. I give them a couple a year for the first year, so we can see, you know, uh, whatever the committee, the number of the committee. Because last time it was like twelve, and 
no more than three a month, which was ridiculous. But uh, I think that we should, you know, be flexible and give them a, a, a minimal amount of opportunities per year for the first year to do that and then see how it works out. And hopefully the community will be okay with that, with the same stipulations that they had before in terms of notifying the community uh, within a certain period of time and so forth and so on. But I think we, we need to look at being a little bit flexible on that. We just need to come up with a number. Uh, just going to interject. Uh, so we do have, I will need a, a specific number um, on that, Francis, uh, to write up that resolution. Um, once we get to that point of things, um, but I do have a number of residents who are eager to have their voices heard. Um, We're time probably for that. Uh, willing to hear them. I want to limit everybody to about two minutes. I don't want this to go on forever, but we have a number of petitions and residents and I'd like to hear from them. Absolutely. But understand everybody, please. And I understand and uh, uh, your concerns. Um, I also understand the liquor authority and the SLA, but this is a, this we are approving as a restaurant and we will be very clear about this as a restaurant. And if they want to have a birthday party or two, maybe we'll give them three a year. I don't know. We'll come up with something that we think is at least allows them some flexibility, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to be what was before. So, um, with that said, please uh, uh, call on people, Onesh, because I can't see it. Okay, great. James, you can go ahead. You have two minutes. You have James? to unmute yourself, James. He's unmuted. Okay, I will then okay. call on Ben. Yes, hi, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Great, thank you. Um, my name is Ben Backash. I am the closest resident to this operation. I live on the ground floor of 195 Hudson Street directly across um, DeBrosis. Um, and while I, I appreciate this is a separate space than the Tribeca rooftop um, uh, space, I think it's very important that the community board consider that DeBrosis Street is um, faces significant quality of life issues based on that operation. And so to support another uh, uh, establishment that has the likelihood to exacerbate those issues um, is really not in the best interest of the community. Um, I can appreciate that uh, uh, the owner of that establishment has other businesses. Um, I cannot help but think that this will serve as an after hours venue for their uh, operation. And with that in mind, oh, excuse me, I'm speaking. Um, with, with that in mind, I, I think it's appropriate that the, the community board limit uh, the ability for the two businesses to have a relationship with one another, um, lest they you know, be perceived as having been manipulated by the applicant and the structure of their applications. I think it's a good point, Ben, and that's why we're being very careful around the hours and what can be allowed there. Uh, we do hear you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, we're going to have James followed by Paul followed by Justin. Uh, James, you can go ahead now. Have you fixed your mic issue? I hope so. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, CB1 for allowing to have this opportunity. Uh, I understand that you want to focus on just this entity and it's a resident who's lived on Desbrosa Street, which is approximately 150 yards long, which already has two event spaces owned by the same person. And just be aware that there is now a hotel that's come online at the end of Desbrosa Street. So with this, there would be four event spaces on Desbrosa Street. With, with a young family, one thing that has scared me many times is the ability in an emergency for the fire, fire brigade, uh, let alone the police to get onto that street. The um, handling of the cars and the traffic, uh, coaches idling, cars idling, drunk people running into the middle of Hudson hailing down cabs. It's, it's really something to consider as a safety issue 
let alone an environmental issue with, with all that exhaust. Um, you know, life with these events is almost as if these of this event space, and in particular this this proprietor who has no regard to the community, steals from us in terms of quality for life. And I would really ask the board to consider to think about us. I know you do, but think about our quality of life, as Ben mentioned earlier. It is well, absolutely horrible. Uh, 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 James, I think there are a number of things. Uh, uh, one of the things I think uh, um, uh, is trying to distinguish, uh, and I know everybody is very uh, uh, suspicious and have a, a feeling very put upon the community, but I think there has to be uh, uh, the restaurant has to do some additional things like putting up no smoking signs within X number. Uh, remember, the entrance is, if I understand correctly, it, they it explained to us the entrance is on canal. And this is a different discussion than we're going to have for the 210 debrosis. I'm, I'm willing to do certain things. I think they should, uh, and this didn't come from me, it came from Tammy. Uh, they should put up no smoking signs, no loitering signs uh, uh, around the, uh, 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 the uh, Hudson area for the neighborhood and for all of that. And I know about debrosis, but I think it's very important that 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 take place. Uh, I could just find one final comment. The um, yes. the, um, the person on behalf of the entity mentioned the garbage pickup. We would really yes. like, um, you know, there was an agreement with actually the building that they wouldn't pick up in the early hours of the morning. That has since been forgotten. Um, you know, two or three o'clock, that, that gate goes up. We hear it, it wakes us up. It used to be no garbage pickup from, I think it was 11 to 8 a.m. But that has, they have let that slide. They also don't control the traffic at all. So, I mean, I would invite you to come down when these four event spaces are operational, but you would probably. Oh, I know. I've been <laughs> by. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Uh, thank you, James. I think there should oh. be something uh, uh, before any of us speak up. Um, and raise your hands, my committee, whoever wants to speak up. But I think there should be something around this garbage collection uh, issue um, that we should be responsive to and that uh, uh, you should be responsive to, uh, Ben. So think about that. Um, all right. Okay, we have two more, uh, two, three, three more. Uh, Paul, uh, two minutes. Unmute yourself, Paul. Around the corner from this location. Just want to raise one important point to clarify, which is the Chefscape website does not list the location on West Houston as a restaurant. They refer to themselves as an 8,000 square foot ghost kitchen with a retail space in the front. So I think there's ah. Some clarification that would be useful on kind of what business Chefscape actually is. And I think related, obviously, to all these trust issues that we have with these owners, I think there's a concern among some of the neighbors that this application is a Trojan horse of some kind and that they're not, in fact, intending to operate a restaurant. And I think the fact that Chefscape in its other location is not a restaurant is relevant to that. Um, I think the key concern from the neighbors, just to reiterate, is about after party activities occurring here. And I understand the community board's view that the stipulations you're putting on the restaurant itself's activities will constrain it to a couple of birthday parties a year. However, I think the concern is could they use this space and in not operating it as a restaurant? operate it as an after party venue for the other facilities that they have. Again, there's no trust between the community and this owner. There's confusion around whether Chefscape is a restaurant or a ghost kitchen. There's deep concern that somehow, you know, through shenanigans, this will become an after party venue. Um, and I think from to follow up on the safety point made previously, it's important to note that with the delineators now up on Hudson, you know, Hudson is also a one lane street um, heading north because the remaining lanes are only for the tunnel. 
Yeah. And the concern with that one lane getting blocked is really the key around safety in the neighborhood. So I think there's an enormous number of issues with this application and with application five. And I understand the board's desire to look at them separately. But from the neighbor's perspective, I think you have to understand how to us, these are all very deeply related matters. I, I thank you, Paul. I thank Paul. you for being so uh, clear. Um, uh, it, it always is a problem for us, and I want everybody to understand this, because the SLA can go above us and make certain decisions. And so I want to be very clear that we are going to approve only if, if we go forward uh, a restaurant with all the stipulations and the requirements of a restaurant and for this particular space. Uh, we will get to the next space at the end of this Tribeca time, uh, uh, if God willing. Uh, but on this, we're, we're going to take them on the word. They put in a, uh, a menu, they've described it to us, and I, I guess the 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 aspect that we will will it'll have to be monitored, and that's I guess also by you, the residents, and I'm, I, it is a burden on you. I I, I understand that, but uh, um, that's where we are. So let's call on the other two people. Onesh, thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. Okay, I have someone on a telephone line. Uh, you can unmute. Yourself and tell us who you are, please. And tell us who you are. Hi, um, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Okay, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. So the privilege that we're discussing giving to this, uh, rather vague operation that's going to be operating somewhere between Hudson Street and Disperses and Canal. Can privileges be added to their activity as the community, it grows accustomed and accepts this level of either rompous activity or respectable activity um, and the hours of operation, including rubbish removal, parking, et cetera, rather than giving a blank slate of birthday parties, which can really mean anything, you know, under under 12 birthday parties or age one birthday parties, I think we'd all be okay with, but I think you know where I'm going with this. Well, I, I, we certainly do. Um, uh, uh, that is a discussion. Uh, uh, we hear you. And uh, we know there is no trust uh, here, and uh, we will, uh, when we get there, we will, um, I, what I can say is we've heard you. So, uh, the consent into consideration. And I have one other we question. How, that. how is it, when there's the word we is used, I would like the we to include the residents, the taxpaying residents, whom you've been kind enough to hear from today, rather than, uh, you know, we don't know who the we is, but we know that we didn't have a chance to really comment on this uh, commercial venture because we were notified very vaguely and very late and at a time of year when many of us were traveling. So is um, there a formal process for- Yeah, well, we have- For passing- well, there is what happens is so you understand the process and we have received many complaints and many petitions on this and we have been uh, we have them. Uh, this is uh, uh, the committee and then from the committee, it goes to the full board meeting and the full board meeting is. Uh, I have to look on my calendar. Uh, full board meeting is going to be uh, on the 27th. Of September, and you can come to that board meeting. I think we're going to not have it virtual, but I'm not sure yet. I'm so dazed and confused about it. I don't know, but um, uh, you can. It'll either be on Zoom or uh, or uh, in real time, and anybody is welcome to come. Okay. All right, Justin, you may go ahead. Two minutes. Hi. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. I don't have a ton to add. I think my, um, you know, my fellow residents 
um, you know, spoke very, um, you know, very clearly, very elaborately, I, I would agree. I mean, just a couple things I would add just regarding something one of the gentlemen um, said before. Uh, I've lived here, I don't know, 10 years. I've never seen any kind of security outside of any of his venues. I've seen ruckuses, I've seen riots, I've seen vomiting. I've seen almost everything you can see out on that street. It reminds me of Mardi Gras on a Saturday night. And I've never seen security. So I think I would just really caution you, and I'm sure you have some experience, you have a ton of experience. Anything that you have in mind, I would just urge you and, and actually plead with you to specifically state in the steps security, birthday parties, because any, you know, unfortunately, having lived here and had experience, and I know Chef Space is a different owner, I appreciate that, but it also has a common owner and an owner with a reputation in the community. And as you can hear, not a very positive one. So, I mean, I, I would just really implore you to, to severely limit, I, you know, I, speaking for myself, have absolutely no issue with a nice, peaceful restaurant. I would go in there, I would eat, I loved American flatbread, but again, echoing what some of the other people have said, we were informed about this literally with one week's notice and under the guise of some flex space, which I guess we're going to have to get to as a later item, because yes. we actually were totally okay, totally okay in 2019 with the chefs, with the chef space concept. We all agreed to it. There were stipulations. We literally come back from summer break. And unfortunately, this is the kind of relationship that we have with this owner and the, his modus operandi. We get an email saying, oh, there's a community board meeting in one week. And by the way, uh, Great news, we're going to put a flex space on the ground floor. Flex space means after party. That's all it could possibly mean. So we can talk about this later. My only two cents is anything that you guys envision on this space, like, for instance, the old chef space contemplated opening a window, because one of those windows, I believe, did open or was being contemplated to open. Let's just say no windows. Loud music. Let's limit the number of speakers. I would really implore you to pay attention to details because Per the garbage discussion, even when the steps are very clear, they're not followed, let alone if they're left big. So I, I would really, okay, really Justin, you're out of time. Justin, Justin, did they send you something in writing that said that they want that they what they were going to do and it said flex space in it? Because I'd like Absolutely, to one hundred thousand percent. I'd be curious if that, that means that that because that that, that that means that they're it's they a flex, were a flex space. Dangerous a flex Francis, it, the flex space is on the next application. It's not on this application. Uh, uh, okay, no, I thought he was speaking to this application that they that no, they, they, they were saying that this application was going to be a flex space. Uh, Mariama, I said that you have your hand up. Sorry. It's okay. I, I was wanting to hear from the residents before I, I spoke anyway. So, um, with respect to Tammy's comment, you know, I, of course, agree, but I think that whenever we review these applications, whether they're owned by the same person or total strangers, we do have to consider the number of restaurants, bars, venues, whatever it is on the same residential block. We do have to take that into consideration whether they're owned by the same person or not. So I'm, of course, going to be, you know, fair. I think this, this committee is always fair um, and listen to all of the presentations, not just this one, but thus far, based on what the residents have said, I'm inclined to vote no on at least one, uh, if not here tonight at the full board, because um, it sounds like, like it's going to propose, uh, uh, present an oversaturation. Uh, well, I, I think, Mariama, your point is well taken. I, uh, uh, being who I am, am uh, willing for uh, the chef space with all the stipulations we put in, and I'm willing to give them uh, maybe two, Francis is right, two parties a year this first and see how they do uh, with notification to the community and all those things. Um, and not to exceed maybe the past a certain time, Francis. Uh, and I'm the time uh, that they're given. They, 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 yeah, 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 they, yeah, yeah. It should uh, they should operate within the stipulated, you know, whatever time we're going to agree. agree to. Uh, but I'm I'm inclined to give them two, not more than that. Uh, 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 for for this year, I think that there there needs to be some um, accountability here. 
uh, 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 Miriamma and Karen and all of you. And they come in with a bad reputation. I didn't know about Chef Space on Houston. It's a different area. However, we have certain things that we are going to require of them. Uh, I think the signage of no smoking, no loitering, I think they have to put that in. I think our changing of hours, um, I think not allowing uh, uh, more than two parties for the year. Um, uh, and Website update. Uh, 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 all of that, Francis, and I think that understanding is we're very clear that this is a sit down restaurant, that this is not anything else but a restaurant. And that's how we are viewing it. Um, I, 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 uh, uh, I feel terrible for the community, but I think the point Tammy made before is we will, I will, we will give them this on the restaurant. If we agree to it, and it comes before the full board, and the community is uh, uh, absolutely uh, should come to it. Uh, but unless there's any <coughs> thing else around this, I would I would think we should vote on the. And I don't need to hear from the applicant anymore. I'm sorry, but I don't. Um, I would like to vote on this as a restaurant with all of the stipulations we want to put in. Yeah, but Justin, we'll definitely have as part of the stipulation, I believe, that they have to notify the community when they're going to have one of these two uh, uh, parties. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, um, uh, in addition to that, can, uh, before uh, you vote, uh, can we decide on a number? Because initially. Two. We got it. You got it. Two. This is it. Two. 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 Okay. How are you screaming? Everybody okay with that? Or, or would, I, I mean, I'm willing to give them a couple, Francis, based on your point. I would give them none, but I'm willing to give them a couple. <laughs> Tammy? Okay, so, guys, you guys. I'm just speaking from experience. They can't be called birthday parties because if I wanted to celebrate right. an anniversary right. party as a grown up or a communion, or I mean, I don't care what you want to call it. Two parties is too. Sell out. Uh, 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 it's what, too do you, what do you call it when you? you it's a uh, full open. Buy. You're talking about a full buyout, right? A full buy. Full two buyout full buyouts for a private year. event. Yeah. Right. Period. Yeah, uh, uh, we're going to call within, them within the time parties. They're not involved. birthday parties. We're going to acknowledge that they have two times during the year. That's it. Full, the Unless full the committee buyouts. tells me. Uh, I, I never heard of buyout. Where have I been? Uh, um, uh, you kind of uh, look at it this way. They could always do, you know, a, everybody's thinking nighttime, but if it's a restaurant, it could also be a daytime buyout in association with spring studios and, and doing something, you know, fashion related. The point is, option. The, 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 wait, the, the real issue for two seconds here is do we give them the two buyouts or do we give them none? No, we give, oh. I say, call the question. <laughs> we well, Justin, what, Justin, what about New Justin, Year's Eve? we're trying to be fair. And what about New Year's Eve? Well, uh, wait, everybody, Justin, uh, I don't want, I, 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 uh, this is board time. The, yeah, was, we're not at the flex space. This is for the restaurant. No, I restaurant, was thinking, period. I heard New Year's Eve and I was thinking the same thing. New Year's Eve. But is that's in New Year's Eve. Yeah, but they have. You would go somewhere where they only had beer and cider on New Year's Eve. That sounds lame. Yeah, but they they're agreeing to a specific time frame, whether it whether it's New Year's Eve or not. It's starting. Right. To yeah, I, 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 I agree with Francis. It's it's a it's a two buyout um, maximum per year, whatever the date is. But yeah, I, I can't see say, this place being New overrun Eve? on New Year's no. Eve. Um, so the prices I, I, that that they these kind of restaurants and venues charge on New Year's Eve, I can't see them people banging down their door to have beer and cider. That doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, and New Year's Eve falls on a Saturday this year, so that means that they get the 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 one o'clock. That's it. They, they get to one o'clock. Period. It, uh, 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 I think it's a liquor license, is it not? On edge, it's not a beer. Uh, for chef's yeah, no. it's a full liquor license. 
Yeah. It's a, okay. I want okay. you all to be very clear. Okay. It's a, yeah, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. I had lost my mind. I probably will by the end of this meeting, but this is what it is. Okay. Uh, I, I don't want to, um, there's a part of me that says, do we say except uh, uh, two venues during the year, except for New Year's Eve? Because the the one thing well, I was trying uh, to say, I, uh, 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 I think that you know they can stay till midnight or they have to whatever from one o'clock. I think it shouldn't be as a buyout on New Year's Eve. I would put that stipulation in, guys, because I think they're not that trustworthy. I'm sorry, and combined with everything else, uh, 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 that's what I would say. Now that's you can fair. disagree. Uh, All right. I I do have two more questions, uh, two other points that had come up uh, regarding garbage pickup time and security. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, we should definitely have security. Well, can the owner answer so he, we can hear? Yeah, we can answers. unmute him, the owner. Okay. The lawyer. I don't want to hear from Matt. He's the PR guy. Ben? Sorry, Matt. Hi, right, this is Ben again. Ben. Um, security, I mean, if you want it, I, it's a, it really is a restaurant, so it's kind of weird to have security there, but I, well, I, I think the security is for the, is when you have venues. Oh, sure. The buyout. Ben. On the buyout. You night, have the buyouts. Too. I have to learn my, my language. Absolutely. When you have if, there's the buyout, a, if there's a buyout, you can have a year. And you will yeah. inform the community. Same stipulation yes, as last time, yes. except only two buyouts now, and we will notify the community in the same way it said in the last tips. And there's no okay. there's no buyout on New Year's Eve. Forget about it. We're gonna put that in this in our whatever. You'll live without New Year's Eve. You can have two buyouts different times. Uh that and the garbage collection. Am I correct, Onesh? Yes. So garbage collection, um, I, I know that neighbors are, are going to say that I'm wrong about this. Our garbage collection is between 7 and 8 a.m. And we would hope that that would be the same for, for this space as well. It all be collected the same because it's well, we're going to put course. it in there. We're going to put it in our uh, uh, stipulation for you and Sounds you're going to agree to it. All right. Yep. The garbage collection is 7 and 8 a.m. Isn't that early? early? One hour in the morning? I think I think that 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 there, there are a couple of things here. Let me get a grip. All right. You can have garbage. You could have garbage up to one o'clock on the nights that you're serving. The community has asked that it not be two and three and four in the morning. And the other is if you're going to have garbage collection, seven AM on the weekends is ridiculous. That's awful. Right. Wouldn't we allow that. We have a carting company, and the carting company is supposed to come by 8 a.m. to pick up the garbage um, from Tribeca Rooftop and also from this place because it is all stored internally, so it's not sitting out on the street. Yeah, but they come at 8 a.m. in the morning. Billy, if you want to, uh, if you want to, let me know if I'm, I'm wrong. I mean, if you want it to be later, it's, we could do it later. I don't know what to say. I. Uh, I you know, it, it's so convoluted. I, I must tell you guys, I mean, we really struggle with this, but garbage at 7 a.m. on the weekends, because that's when your parties are, for Christ's sakes. Well, you're waking uh, people up on the weekend. I mean, that, you know, on a weekday, I, I could live with it, but I still think it's very early. But on the weekends, it's just not acceptable. So we're going to put something. I, I have to figure out. I mean, the, the, there's something. Uh, uh, why on a Saturday uh, uh, it couldn't be uh, uh, 8.30, 9 a.m., uh, your carding company's busy working around. They could do that on Saturdays and Sundays. Well, I still don't understand I think, I think that's I think that's fine. I, what we were saying was that it's not going to be at two o'clock in the morning, which is what the residents were complaining about. And I, well, I mean, well, normal... well, time well, two or it's... seven. Yeah. I'm sorry. In the interest of time, uh, can we nail down a time for a the time. stipulation? Because we do have quite a lot of uh, items in the agenda tonight. Yes, we do. Thanks, Mona. Uh, well, uh, uh, certainly not uh, on the weekends. You can't pick up the garbage before what time, Francis? At before, the, 
that eight o'clock. They said they had the pickup was at eight o'clock. Was scheduled for seven and eight. eight, eight seven and eight. Okay, so make it from eight to nine. Period. Okay, fine. All right. So with that all said, everybody, uh, uh, you know, there's only so much we can control. All right, we can put the stipulations in. I want everybody to hear, and we can hope they uh, uh, um, adhere to them. If they don't, I'm going to say this to everybody who's in the audience: you call three one one and you complain and you let us have that number at the community board. And that's the only way we can do something if they're not in non-compliance. And we will back you, but we need that. All right, so on that, I have my board, my oh, committee. Wait, 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 can I just let the community know one other thing? And after we do the stipulation, it will be online. So the community, I if you wanna that. have a reference point in terms of what was agreed to, you need to go on our website and make a copy of it so that you can follow along and know what's supposed to happen. Yeah, and you can come to the the, the, the big meeting to see us right. talk it through as well. All right, in which Thanks, in, Um, Yeah, Susan. Yeah, Susan, I, I just wanted to add that for people who are active on this issue, it doesn't really end only with the full board meeting. People can also take their concerns directly to the SLA, and they should do mm -hmm. that. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, Karen. True. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can write letters. You could do whatever. All right, so here we are on the restaurant, 205 Hudson Street. With all um, our stipulations. And sorry whatever. to interject again, Susan. Um, can everybody put their cameras on who, who are voting? Oh, yeah. Put your cameras on, Mary. Uh, Mariama has her camera. I can see her pretty face. Mariama, right. Mitchell. Okay. Uh, um, all right. So, Mitchell, Tammy. I just put go. my video My videos on. I, we see. We Thank see, you. We see. We're all fine. Tammy's not voting. Go ahead. Just listening. So, all, uh, any nays? Yes. Okay, Karen, thank you. Any uh, uh, recusals? Any abstentions? I will take that the rest are in favor. I would like to abstain, but I'm not going to abstain here. We'll see where we go. So there you are. You have 205 Hudson Street. Let's move along. Because okay. we're just, okay. All right. So we are now at, let me just make sure that we are. Yes. We yeah, the Roger Hill. Two, uh, yeah. Let's 225 go to 227 West Broadway, Roger Hill Market. And this is a wine, beer, and cider. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's see the hours, the notices. Sorry, we what have. address is that? 225-227. West Broadway. And you said this one is the beer and cider? Oh, yeah, yes. they're okay. I looked over there. Yeah, okay. What street? It's a look at the, descri the description. Go back. Don't go so fast. 225 West Broadway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it's a, we are operating an all day and uh, uh, cafe and market. Coffee, pastries, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 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 our premises within a hotel, no. It's a Terra wine bar with small plates. Uh, so, yeah, 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 everybody. Uh, yeah. Um, keep going. So, so, how many rooms? One. Let's look at the, the uh, keep going, size and capacity. So, uh, uh, in which street? Look it up on your map. No, I'm, I'm being facetious. It's 225. I'll look it up. Hold up. I got it. I got the it. applicant's not here? Is the uh, applicant on here? Dustin, are you here? Let's see. Can you raise your hand if you are here? Dustin? There's nobody oh, here yes. I saw you. Applicant. Dustin, I just saw you. Where did you disappear to? Oh, there we go. Uh, you can unmute. There we go. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. 
do you have a representative with you? Uh, Joseph, perhaps? Yes, correct. Uh, I don't see him in the... Uh, oh, Joe? Wait, hold on. I saw you. There we go. You kept moving. Okay. Can I ask you can a question? Uh, uh, go first ahead. Of all, the wrong. Part, wait, hold on. Is this part so, of a hotel or not? This no. is not part of a hotel, no. No. Okay, no. That's good. That's what I thought. All right. So, so the Joe McClellan Council on the on behalf of the applicant, uh, Dustin Wilson is the principal. I just wanted to, I apologize to the board. Just wanted to make a few clarifications on um, application name. Yeah, White Street. Uh, yeah, it's, it's 227 Broadway. They actually own the establishment next door, one White Street, which is um, full liquor licensed establishment, well liked by the community. Um, this is a, a cafe market that will serve sandwiches um, throughout the day, closing at 7 p.m. They were just look, looking to serve yeah, by the little beer, yeah, a little beer and wine to complement their sandwiches, soups, pastries. Um, it's more of a counter space checkout. I emailed a floor plan late by accident to Miss James, so I apologize for that. Um, and and we're lo and we're looking to continue to be good neighbors and give back yeah. to the uh, uh, you don't have to say anymore. Yeah, I look. I have one time. question. I have one move question. on to the hours. It's still Pardon seven. Me? Until they're, they're not fine. open late. They're open until seven. They're yeah. fine. Yeah, they're fine. Seven o'clock. Yeah. yeah, it's right near the yes. tunnel. It's near North Moor and. Uh, no, all right, we don't. I don't Paris. think we need to. Yeah, we don't need to belabor this. I think it's fine. No, no we don't. I have just one question. Go. Yeah, the, um, there was or there is um, a Sufi mosque right there. And the response, uh, you know, is there a, a house of worship within 200 feet was no. So I want to know whether or not the mosque is still there and whether it's still operating. Uh, because within within the lamp system on uh, the SLA website, there was nothing within 200 feet. So um, uh, I'm not positive if this the, the mosque is or is not, but based on the uh, research on the SLA website through the lamp system, there was no house of worship within 200 feet. Okay, I think I saw the name of an owner um, in this application when I looked at it earlier. And I, I thought perhaps that the owner was actually affiliated to the mosque, but I'm not sure. Uh, not to my own. Dustin maybe can answer that. Dustin? Uh, well, can, uh, uh, I don't know what else to say, Karen. Um, yeah, I, I don't believe so. I, I, do, I would just like to clarify the name is really is going to be Ambassadors Only LLC and it's Riger Hill Market, not Roger Hill Market. So that's that's my apologies. Um, could not we, Roger. Could, Hi there. Sorry, I got muted again. Um, yeah, the, the name is actually Rigger Hill, R-I-G-O-R, -R, not Roger. So that was a mistake on the application. Okay. Yeah, could could we actually ask for clarification on the house of worship issue, um, you know, before the full board meeting? Sure. Uh, I mean, I don't have any trouble with it. They can still have, uh, can they not have a place, even if it? Uh, well, in, uh, in, I don't know, but I think we need I to clarify they can, that. But Let's clarify it. Onedge, yeah. you can talk to the lawyer. just be subject to the, to the hearing, right? A 500 foot rule hearing, but I could be wrong too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's correct, Mariama. That's yeah. why I'm if, saying. If they are, it's... if they are, the SLA will pick it up. I'm sure, but I will look into it as well. I made Thank it up. You. Thank you. All right. Uh, so can I have a. Call the question Call the in question. a second. Oh, Gar and 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 uh, well, you have the place next door, so it's all related to that. Um, all right. Uh, call the question a second. Oh, second. I need a second. Okay, second. thank you. I got it. I got it. 
uh, all in um, uh, 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 any nays, any recusals, uh, any abstentions. Go for it, guys. Good luck. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Next one. Uh, give me a second. Okay, let us go through all of this. All right. Here Laughing Man Cafe. Okay. So let us see. This is good. Laughing man, we have, uh, let me just make sure that I have the right. Uh, do we have any, oh, where's the, it's on this. Uh, can you raise your hand if you are here representing uh, Laughing Man Cafe? Uh, yes, David, I will unmute you, panelist. Are you the only one here tonight, David? Yes. Okay. Well, so for context, uh, the, they have applied before, uh, they've gotten a, a waiver for the bathroom, uh, you only have one bathroom, if I'm correct, David, right. and you received a waiver from the community board uh, prior uh, a few months ago uh, for that one bathroom. And now we're applying, you need uh, the board's approval for your beer, wine and cider license. Right, and and that waiver was solely for the application for the beer and wine license. There was no other reason to apply for it. And in fact, a lot of that conversation was around the bar, but obviously we're here and happy to answer any questions again. Mm -hmm. Well, the waiver does Have not you... prevent you from coming to the meeting. Um, right. No, that's that's the community yes. meeting. Yeah. Yep. Members, go Have ahead. You Im Have you improved the bathroom situation at all? Um, uh, how do you mean we improved it? Because you only had one bathroom and correct. So we have one bathroom. That was the, that's why we got the waiver. We still only have one bathroom. That is for everybody. Yes, that was the, that was the meeting that we 1st had the waiver of the bathroom was. Anticipation of this license, which we had a full conversation about it at that time. What is the nature of the bar? How many people, um. And so the board granted that that waiver already. The bathroom is a full code handicap bathroom. There's just only one of them. There is a downstairs bathroom, beverages. if you remember correctly, but that's for the staff. Am I correct, David? Right. Yes, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, um, okay. So uh, there. Uh, I guess I should just get to the skippy right now. There are real concerns about the sidewalk, about traffic, about people hanging out, about noise, about all of this that impacts the community. And uh, uh, um, I don't know how you want to answer that. I'm going to let the community ask you the questions, but how do you, how do you plan to mitigate all of this with this now, this new uh, uh, um, uh, uh, bar thing that you want? And uh, what I want to know is uh, uh, the public assembly capacity inside is 70 people. Is that correct? Yes, uh, 70 or 75. I'm not sure what the use group six is. I think it may be 75. And what uh, on the application, it's 70. Okay. So, and you're asking for also for an extension out into the. Street, am I correct? Or have I missed it? This not is sure not what that means. No, their, their <laughs> licensed outdoor area, they check none. 
we have we have our street seats which have been folded in by dot to the outdoor dining restaurant we still run it like the street seat meaning anybody can sit there because that's the spirit in which it was intended um, but it technically folds into the um, outdoor dining program that was dot's decision well, because so you have you have you have chairs on the street. No, no. On the street. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have chairs on the sidewalk. I have the same seating. You do. That... You do. I sidewalk? just looked at a picture. Yes, right in front no, of the have... door. We mm -hmm. have a loading dock, and we have chairs on our loading dock, benches, and two chairs in the window. I have nothing on the sidewalk, and then we have the street seats, which we've had for maybe seven years now. Do you do pe can people carry their drinks out into the street? Uh, they can be served at the seating area. Um, I don't believe they're allowed to carry them around in public, you know, open container laws, but we're allowed to serve in your in the open restaurant capacity. And you're asking for a uh, uh, um extended hours am i correct no i'm asking for or those are the hours i'm asking for uh i'm asking for till 12. The application says 12 30. yeah uh, 12 is 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 what i'm asking for and and let me also say because i think this answers some of your your questions chairperson i have a vision for this place and Every business, if you're a sports bar, you have a certain vision for that. If you're a lounge, you have a certain vision for that. In practice, as a business owner, I would like this business to be sustainable and, and done with the crowd, honestly, by 11 o'clock. That is the kind of business I'm hoping. I am asking for 12, but it's not to push it. I am, what I am trying to create is, honestly, a quiet place at night for people to yeah. go have um beer and wine in the same atmosphere that they come to us in the morning yeah. i am targeting regulars in the neighborhood which is 95 percent of our our audience that want to come after work and meet again in the place they started their their morning um so when it comes to noise and mitigation i believe what we're catering to are the neighbors who want to take care of the neighborhood anyway um it's the same people you've had in the morning. So that's how I would begin to answer that question. I can certainly open to answer in any others. I'm, I'm sorry, Chairperson, I can't hear you. I'm not sure if that's me or you. Uh, it's me. It's me. Sorry, uh -huh. uh, uh, David. Do you have windows that you keep open or doors? No, there's a, there's a door that we keep open during the morning rush, but it's usually closed by the afternoon. Hell yeah, okay, okay. Um, uh, anything else from the committee? I would like, uh, we won't, uh, uh, there would be no uh, uh, midnight on Sundays. You know, we've changed it. Uh, what I've heard, the, that's fine. Yes, I, I heard we, that, that's fine. We, we just don't do it anymore, uh, yeah. David. Um, uh, that makes sense. Um, so anybody have any other questions before I call on the community members? Okay. Okay, we uh, do have one community member who would like to speak. Renee. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thanks very much for the opportunity. Uh, first, um, I've been a longtime resident of Tribeca since 1992. I'm a big fan of Laughing Man and I'm there frequently. Um, it seems to me though, this proposal 
is a uh, first step in transitioning laughing man from a coffee shop daytime cafe to a club whether it's a comedy club music wow. club um or a restaurant mm. i'm not sure but um that's where it feels like to me i think it's the if you look at the large street frontage there's a lot of real estate there and if uh occupancy is determined by a uh, square footage of a particular building um i actually find it hard to believe that the um capacity is only 70 people so that's the first thing i think you're going to be able to have a lot more people and i don't know if that includes external people who are sitting outside as well as people sitting inside i assume that's only people sitting inside uh, secondly, the, the street is very, very narrow and it's very residential and it's a very quiet street that generally, I mean, there's a lot of activity, but in terms of kind of music and late night activity, I think if you look at the hideaway, for example, and the square footage that they have and the number of people they can accommodate and outdoor seating and the amount of noise that that generates, even for people with the best of intention, I found myself sitting outside the, the hideaway at midnight and have caught myself kind of laughing with a small group of six people and realize, you know, we're probably keeping up the neighbors. Imagine that number in terms of the number of people who could be sitting outside um, expanding by probably four or five, five times the number that this uh, frontage at the hideaway could accommodate. Um, the second thing, the, the next thing is I, you know, I, I hate to say this because it, it's going to sound like I'm I'm somehow being critical of the current staff, and I'm not. Uh, the Laughing Man staff are, are great people, but in terms of enforcing other rules about you know closing times or noise, etc., um, I just have to point out that uh, the staff has not been successful at enforcing uh, basic pre-existing rules and regulations. Um, dogs are walk into the laughing man all the time. And again, it's not the fault of the staff. I've seen many staff members attempt to, you know, kind of tell own dog owners, listen, dogs aren't allowed here. You have to leave. And they're just flat out ignored. Um, you're, you know, you, you've got some very entitled people. And um, so, you know, how are those people going to respond when they've had a few drinks, they're sitting outside with friends, and um, someone comes in to say, you know, last call or you got to go. Um, I just don't have, I think that street will become really, really disrupted by, by the noise. And, and the third thing is, I, I just think there are already plenty of bars on that, so, on that small street and in this area. Um, I, I just don't think that the community, I was delighted to see uh, a coffee shop open. And I think that really um, served a, a need in the community. But I haven't heard anyone kind of saying, gee, we really need a comedy club here. Wouldn't it be great if Gotham was um, on Dwayne Street. Um, and so, you know, for that reason, I just think that the board should really consider, um, you know, the size of this, this space and how it will be used um, if, uh, you know, a liquor license is provided, especially up until midnight. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Manette. Thank you. Um, anybody else from the community? Uh, yes, I have uh, Stephen and Suzanne. Stephen, I'm unmuting you. Go ahead, Stephen. Directly adjacent to Laughing Man. Uh, and I would say that in the, uh, the AM, the noise from patrons and dogs is constant. Uh, cars double park while customers wait online to enter the store. Laughing yeah. Man, yes, sometimes they're triple parked. Laughing Man currently uses their building frontage, which is 50 feet, for 90 feet of what I would call street seats, or 50 feet on either side of the sidewalk, which is very narrow. On busy mornings, the sidewalk is frequently blocked by patrons, baby carriages, and Laughing Man signs. The store is busy from its open to its close. Uh, the sign guards have created a very successful business. And unfortunately, from my point of view, there has been little regard for the concerns of neighbors. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. is one thing. 
uh, which is that's the current Lafayette hours. The service of wine and beer and expanding operating hours and using the street seats outside, which will certainly have lots of wine and beer, from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. will create different issues. Wine and beer or liquor being served at this location within 50 feet of or frontage and 30, 40 outside seats is really unacceptable. Also, there are at least five establishments serving wine, beer, or liquor within 500 feet. It's probably more like 300 feet. And adding another one from my perspective is simply unacceptable. Thank you. Okay, and we have Susan, or would you like to say something? Me? Yes, there's a there's a Susan Pillsbury, uh, but Susan, did you want to say something before I brought her? I'd I like to. Uh, 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 Tammy, do you want to speak now, or you want to let this next speaker speak? I'll go after the community because I have several questions okay. for the petitioner. Fine. Okay. Uh, Suzanne. Is directly next door to the laughing man. Frequently, I can't open my door because there are baby carriages in front of it. Their garbage cans are in front of my door and there are rats constantly around the garbage cans. We have complained to 311, yes, we have. So I just wanna say to increase what they're doing is just, I can't, understand why that would be allowed. I feel that they, the owners, I don't know about the workers, but the owners are completely irresponsible about the upkeep of the space. I see dogs peeing uh, around the, the benches where young children are crawling and it's disgusting. So I am right next door and I really think to expand their hours and to give them more license is a very bad idea. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Suzanne. You're welcome. Uh, uh, thank you for speaking up. Carlotta, I guess you're next, right, Onesh? Yes, that's correct. Carlotta, you can go ahead. the Hello? opportunity. Hello? Do you hear yes. me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear okay. you. Well, thank you for the opportunity to speak here. Um, I uh, really um, agree with my previous speakers. I think that David Steingart is very well spoken, and if he has this vision, he must have not visited his business for a while, because it really isn't that peaceful quiet place that he has envisioned. Maybe in the beginning that was the case, and then it added value to the neighborhood. But over time, it has grown to actually impact the quality of life negatively. I live here since um, to, uh, nine, 1997. And uh, you know they started out as a kiosk, and that was fine. That was nice. And then they built the outdoor space and that became over time the real issue because uh, as my previous speakers uh, described, there are rats around that in regular intervals. There is a rat infestation. Um, people, uh, patrons, uh, they might be local, they might be not so local because they stop with their cars there. Um, they block, they have no consideration. I mean, they block the walkway with the strollers, et cetera, PP. And uh, so uh, to, uh, to grant a license, even if it's just for beer and wine and to extend the hours will just uh, aggravate the the situation, it, it is predictable. And so in my mind, if you see this in context, um, it's quite a salami tactic here. You know, you start with a little, I mean, I don't begrudge the success of the business, but with success comes a responsibility. And the owner has been completely unresponsible 
unresponsive to the requests. The owner doesn't live anymore above the establishment. That's an important factor. So not affected by the operations. The management of the place is not reacting on enforcing anything. And so uh, <laughs> there's just not the confidence right now that with alcohol being, uh, being available, that this would be a quiet operation. And I've also seen the flyers for a comedy club. So thank you, Carlotta. I, I, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you telling us this. I mean, thank you very much. Uh, Tammy. Thanks, Susan. So here's a couple of questions that I have and I'll put my video on. So we know where we're coming from. I'd like the owner to answer, I believe under the new open restaurant law, the public seating that we had granted them in the sidewalk has now been privatized as of right for their private use. Is that correct? It has, but I have not treated it that way because that's not the spirit in which it was intended. So anybody can still sit there. But it is, so the question becomes if and when if this was granted, would you put that in as a stipulation that that would remain public seating permanently? But, but that would also have to mean you would have to enforce that there's no alcohol served there. And I say that because you cannot order to go liquor and stay on property. If it's plain public seating, then that's an eligible area for people to sit. If you're, if it is privatized as of right, then you have to serve liquor. All of it has to be served and maintained and monitored. It cannot be to go liquor in any stroke of the imagination. Correct. So that's why I'm saying no. I mean, people, we we will serve drinks there, um, but in the spirit of it. I am I am treating it as uh, the, the 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 public place that was in originally applied for. So no, uh, it, it is under the DOT. I, I will serve things out there. If somebody wants to come sit and not order anything, they're welcome to do that. Like they've been able to do for the past twelve years or seven years that I've had it. I apologize. Tammy, and okay, and how many seats do you have outside? Um. There are, let's see, uh, three big benches, I believe, which seat three people. So that's nine. Um, and there's two small benches. So nine. Um, you could probably seat 15 people. And is that included in your occupancy count that you're using for the inside? No. And um, that goes to what, what the building allows. It doesn't go to the outside. So. Okay, go on, Tammy. I just, I mean, I will say that I do have concerns. I, I think that uh, it has been a value add to have public seating out there. It has definitely started out as a fantastic location and many really good things to say about it, but with success and growth does come opportunities for quality of life issues that have not been addressed for the neighbors, nor I, I'm a little sort of afraid because in their presentation, they didn't say anything about the public seating now being privatized. That, it, you know, if I wasn't knowing of the law, I wouldn't know that. And that's a loss. We said, yes, we gave them public. Okay, they're willing to leave that public seating as public. That is without the, alcohol. Right. No, what, I, what I'm saying is, I just mentioned that just what I felt I was being transparent in. in in the trust that we built on it, that the intention of that seating was not to be privatized. DOT has made it. If I want to, I could. That's not how it's going to be treated in the in the spirit of it. But yes, I am going to serve alcohol out there. But if somebody wants to sit there and not buy anything, they're welcome to it. Uh, Tammy, uh, can I voice the concern I have? Yeah. I think that the uh, I've been by. I think what the neighbors describe is correct. I am loath to allow this to go to midnight. And I'd like to hear from my committee members. Francis. 
Uh, you're muted, Francis. We can't hear you. And Susan, I'd be on board with I, you. I'm I'm online looking at uh, the look around space, and I see some additional seating that's kind of camouflage with this black uh, 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 planter to kind of hide the the additional seating that is right outside your restaurant, your your establishment you know, uh, on the other side of the door from the two benches. So in terms of what the community is saying and the encroachment of, of space that you've done, you've seen the, from the first time that you presented to us to now, you have gained a significant amount of space. And in your application, I noticed that you put down comedy club, comedy and, um, community community events i don't know what kind of community events you were speak you're speaking to um because you haven't done any thus far but the, com the the community has noted that you've um sent out flyers or made some kind of announcements about the uh the, the comedy events and i can see you're setting yourself up to be able to have some sort of uh, 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 event there, you know, whether it be for the community or comedy club, but you said there was no seating outside and I'm looking at seats right now. Uh, when I, I'm sorry, friends, I, just when I, I don't remember saying there was no seating outside. I said there's seating on the loading dock and the public and then the public seating area. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, and I just, I would like, I, I would just like to mention, because I'm, I'm chairperson, I won't take up the time combating everybody's view on how we run the business. I obviously disagree. Um, I am, and while I am, um, uh, I live upstairs three days a week away from my family to make sure that there is an owner present um, there as any good business should do. You don't stay in business for 12 years by not being clean, by not giving good service and not being part of the neighborhood. And I would just like to say that's what we've done. And as one final note, I would just like to direct the board's attention to the letters of support that have come in for us as well from the community. Yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Uh, Mariama. Unmute. So I just want to make sure I understand um, the uh, dynamic. So it's, is it like a pop? Like no. Public seating? That existed prior to the pandemic that was like a pop it's kind of it was road bed seating that you could apply for that right. you would build the restaurant owner was or bar or cafe was responsible for building its own structure approved by dot outside the restaurant and it would be operated as fully public seating so if you bought a muffin across the street you can eat that muffin at the public seating that was put up, even if it belonged to the rest to laughing man. So, so other area restaurants can theoretically use this seating as well, right? Cool. It's not just this. And they have, and they have. They have in the past, but with the new ruling with open restaurants due to COVID and the pandemic, that seating was given as of right out of the public realm, taken out of public use and is now part of the property of the restaurant without community board purview or comment. And that would apply to pre-existing seating as well, this pre-existing seating that was there correct. before the pandemic? Yep, correct. Yes. So, uh, 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 Mariama, you have something else or you're- I just wanted to make sure I understood. It is essentially privatizing a pot. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's what it is. Okay. Uh, uh, Mitch, you have a question and then I want to say something. Okay. Uh... I'm, I'm I'm sympathetic with the residents, obviously, and so I wanted to ask David, uh, who had brought up like you know, for 12 years the cleanliness or the seven years cleanliness, and one of the residents brought up the rat problem. Obviously, rats in New York are not David's, uh, uh, uh you know, fault. But what has he done, or David? What have you have you done anything to help mitigate the problem that seems to be directly surrounding your business? Yes, thank you for the question. We have. We, first of all, we have an exterminator that comes in once a month and whenever we call him, and sometimes it's more than that. So that is a regular service that we, we, we do. 
we have sealed a while ago the tops of those those barriers um you know that we needed up front we've removed all plants we all now have uh, uh faux plants in front so there's no earth for them to to burrow into which we found to be a major problem um and we have our cleaning crew who constantly cleans it and um um, while I know people have said there has been issues, there's never been a substantiated claim and and uh, Lucian himself has has come by to check on them and um, has never seen the condition of disarray in which some of the uh, community has reported they observe it. So well, that, that's what we've done to, to mitigate it. I would just say that once a month uh, uh, for me, if I was living next door would not be sufficient. <laughs> <laughs> and I and to your point, Mitchell, sometimes it hasn't been, and there's been weeks where I've called him multiple times. So it's a good point. And and um again, it's in our best interest to make sure there's no rats. And it's in our best interest to make sure it's clean, which again, given the business we've built, I believe we have done that. And I appreciate your concern, and we're very much on that. Thank okay. you, Susan. Yeah. Uh so listen everyone uh i i have i have real trepidation about this and i've been by and i saw it when it was just a little thing and how it's grown and i don't know where it's going i think our our biggest point here is the time we allow this to happen and how we limit that time and uh give him a year to see how or six months or however we want to deal with it to see how he does. Clearly, people don't make up things, David, and are not, you know, I it is hard to get by. People don't who don't really live there are uh, 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 people with dogs are terrible at times and I love dogs. So I, I, I'm Agreed not I don't, I, I don't wait, 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 let me finish. Oh. I don't I, I don't want to um, uh, to have the community maligned or not considered what they're saying has merit. Okay, that's number one. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, uh, before I go on and on, I'm going to let Tammy speak. You still have, you have your hand up, Tammy. Say what you'd like to say or propose something. It's fine by me. I definitely think that uh, I, you know, me personally, I would agree with you with the earlier hours. I have a bigger concern where it's talking about comedy club and things like that. This is a coffee shop. A coffee shop seeking a beer and wine license is a coffee shop seeking a beer and wine license. It is not a coffee shop turned into a nightclub. If it's a coffee shop turned into a private event and nightclub, that's a different conversation. And just be honest about the change in, in usage. You want a coffee shop that closes at a certain hour and turns into a bar. That's what it's sounding like to me. And I don't mean that disparagingly. I'm just looking at it from an events perspective, right? You don't yes. serve the coffee after five o'clock. You're looking to turn the location into a nightclub. I it's it's a fair. Well, if I could just respond, it's a fair question. But I think I've been very transparent about what I'm trying to do, and I don't think, I don't think a nightclub is even close to a right characterization. We've had five comedy nights so far. I don't know if anybody knew that without any issue. Um, Are they private so, buyouts? No, it's a it's a collaboration with Stand Up New York and. Um, that's well, clearly it. the community and, knew it was happening. They complained about it. Come on, David, don't, don't, don't. No, I, no, but I, of course they knew it was happening. Me, no, no, I'm sorry, Susan. I, I don't, I, of course they knew it was happening. We put signs up and advertise for it. I, and this is what I'm saying. What I'm trying to express, and, and again, I can only rely on the trust of operating what I think has been a good business in the community and is popular in the community. So I can only rely on that good faith I hope I receive. What I'm trying to curate is absolutely not a nightclub. I'm trying to curate one, a place where people can go for a quiet nightcap with beer and wine. Second, yes, I am trying to uh, 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 create a, if, you, if I'm honest, an intellectual community salon. I want to have uplifting and inspiring and informative events. I'll give you just a few examples. I hosted a Senate debate with Tribeca Alliance. I have an event with BMCC next uh, 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 this October, where there's students from the entrepreneur entrepreneurship program who I'm close to and work with 
will come and have a pitch fest so they can practice pitching to investors their ideas. I've spoken to many people in the community who are authors and writers and painters um, of showing their films, of coming to talk about their books. That is the crowd I want. I do not want the heavy drinking crazy and bar David, crowd. David, why, why would you even okay. then change the hours to look at midnight? Midnight, midnight's, if, if that's the key, then you don't need to no, do midnight. Right, so it's a good question, Tammy. So as I said before, and again, this just relies on trust, and I can only hope I can prove it to you. I yeah. believe our business will, re even when we have these events, will wrap up by 10 or 11. I truly believe that's the, what the business is gonna show. But that being said, I am asking for 12. So David, I will yeah. tell you that as a chair, the community board did receive complaints by email. I know you have you know, written supporters, it's not as clear cut as, as as it sounds from looking at black and white. We do have complaints in our own file. I understand that, that's why we're here. And, and if the intention is really until nine or 10 o'clock, then that's what your licensing should be because I midnight agree. is untenable. I agree. So I, I this think, is I what think I, it's a reasonable uh, request, but I hear you, Tammy. Uh, 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 this is what I would propose. And uh, 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 I would propose, uh, and I'm being generous, I would propose a nine o'clock uh, Sunday through Thursday and 10 o'clock on the weekends. And that's as far as I would go. I need to hear from the rest of Ma Mariama. You want to speak up? I'm yeah, sorry. I, ag just... I agree. I don't know why students uh, pitching ideas would need beer or, or wine at midnight. Um, nor political candidates, you know, debating what, what is the beer and wine about. So I think 10 is fine. Uh, uh, that's on the weekends and on the, and the weekdays, I, I, I like eight, but I would give him nine. I'm not, I don't want to. Take I think that's fair. I, I support you. Uh, so, uh, David, that's my proposal and I don't see any hands raised by my dear members who are going to disagree with me on that one. Unless no, that's fine, but I will, I will definitely not agree to that and just say, I believe that's an unreasonable request, but I appreciate, um, uh, I hear, I hear that's that just, that's just, well, and we will send a letter with our resolution, uh, 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 uh if, the, if this passes, uh, stating the community concerns to the SLA. I, I want you to know that you may not Understood. agree, but, and if I have to, I will go speak at the SLA as well. Understood. Okay. So will I, and I, I will send the comments as well. So I appreciate the time. Okay. So everybody with all the changes that we have discussed, basically it's the hour change between uh, in the stipulation and his venues. And I don't know, uh, Tammy, Mariama, Francis, Pat, do we limit, do we put a number on the venues he's allowed or just let it be and let it play out what, do you mean? what i mean those those comedy nights those whatevers that that's what i'm talking he about. said he didn't leave it private they weren't private buyouts he was hosting them and leaving them open is that correct david yes but uh, but nobody asked me that question yet but if uh, uh somebody wanted to have a birthday party or something or a dinner no, don't go to birthday parties that's not what where I'm, we are what i'm saying is yes you know it's a, it's a it's a if somebody wants to rent it out and we think it's an appropriate fit yes i would I want know. to do it then yeah i understand, Susan, I I understand you your objection there. i understand your objection and you're not passing the resolution anyway so i'm not sure what the limiting does. David, uh, you're no, very wrong, David. We are David, going to pass a resolution. We but will it may be. not be what you want to see, but we okay. are going to pass a resolution. David, so, let me ask you something. How many yeah. private buyouts have you done in a year's time when it was a coffee shop? Uh, zero, because we closed at seven and we didn't have the, the staffing or the business model for it. Francis, you have a thought? Two. <laughs> like we did for the other one. I think that's reasonable. Okay, guys. So we have a. We're going to make a. Uh, uh, hold on, Karen. Let me just propose, and then I'll let you speak. Um, uh, we're going to propose the hours uh, mm -hmm. from uh, nine o'clock on the weeknights, and we're going to give them ten o'clock on the weekends. We're going to let them do 
with this new vernacular that I'm loving, two buyouts during the year. Um, uh, and uh, With the exception of New Year's Eve. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. You want to be consistent. I love it. Uh, that's why I have a committee. Isn't that the <laughs> reason? Uh, uh, Karen, say what you want to say. No, I'm, I, I didn't want to say anything. It's okay. fine. So with that all there, everybody, is that okay? Can we, uh, can I have a call, call the question? question? A second, somebody? Second. Uh, all right. Any recusals? Any nays? Nay. Okay. Good girl, Karen. Any abstentions? I, I'll go along with it and uh, um, uh, I will go along with it. Cause if I have to testify, I'm going along with it. Uh, I'm I sorry, were there any abstentions? I didn't hear that correctly. No, I no, heard something. no, okay. no, you heard me mumbling, but no, the mumble is gone. Uh, all right, okay. asses, let's go. So everybody, I'm going to make some parameters. 62 Thomas is coming in October. Am I correct on That's correct. All right, so 2-10 debrosis. Hello, everybody. Uh, Here we all are. Right. Now, I am going to limit this. I can't because we have other business as well. I want to make this, a, 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 let's give ourselves till uh, a quarter to nine. That's 20 minutes and see if we could get this done within that time frame because I know the community wants to speak. I think this is critical for us and um, let's have the presentation. <laughs> okay, Ben, Max. Yeah, let's hear from Ben. I don't need to hear from anybody else. Okay. So this is an alteration application. It is yeah, for yeah. Tribeca rooftop, which we were talking about before. Uh, they've been in the uh, the neighborhood for 25 years, as I think the neighbors um, have mentioned. Um, what we're doing here ultimately is part of a, a longer term plan where we are reducing the size of the space by an entire floor, the 11th floor, which is gonna reduce capacity by about 700. This is just the first part of it. This is the, if you wanna go down a little bit more, Sorry. What we're doing here is, is we're adding a ground floor space, a small room that is going to be used for small dinners and breakfasts and conferences and speaking events. We're adding a quarter of the 12th floor, which we don't already have. So we have three quarters of the 12th floor. We're adding a quarter to make the 12th floor. And then on the rooftop, which is exterior space, which we already have, we're taking a little bit more of place that used to be mechanicals and we're putting up an internal structure for another small space, which is going to be all inside in this internal structure. That's the alteration application. If you want to go down one more, we can go to the first space that we're, we're including. So I have a question to everybody on the committee and Tammy, I'm sorry to raise this. What if we don't approve this? Where do we go? Oh, I'm a little kind of confused. Because they're just... expanding their space. Let's be oh, really hold clear. On. Hold okay. on. All right, hold on, Susan, hang on. Okay. First of all, everybody in the application team should be able to be heard. I know you said Ben only because he's lovely and succinct, but if the owner wants to speak or any of the other app, you know, well, parts fine. of the application he can team, speak, absolutely. We have to. Um, yes, uh, Billy, I've been trying to unmute you and I'm not sure. That's okay. Uh, you know, whoever else they have with them. I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, it was just a statement for public use. Fine. Um, well taken. It, it looks like they are reducing, not increasing space. So, you know, there's expansion and retraction. And, and so I don't know why we wouldn't fully hear them out. This is an opportunity to put things in and work with them in another way. So we can say for things that we do not believe is working well due to the comments and feedback from the neighbors, who I hope to goodness have filed 311 complaints and had the police report because that is the only way that the SLA will listen, right? They're an outstanding business already with a license. We're not gonna be able to yank the license. Of course not. So, 
hear it out, be fair. There were concerns about them using the downstairs flex space in association with the restaurant. Make it a stick that it that it is only in association with this. It is never to be used with the restaurant. Like there are ways that we can make this work and try and get a greater benefit out of it. But if we do, if we aren't willing to listen at all, then we haven't done our due diligence to the business owner or the community because we haven't given ourselves an opportunity to get more back. That's why we have Tammy as the chairperson. Okay. Um, uh, so thank you. Don't go away. Um, so I, uh, you want to go through more then you, you. So if you want to go down to go down speak, more. It's fine by me. Thank you. Um, and sorry, one more down. Okay, great. So this is the first space we're adding. This is a cellar space. It is for storage and kitchen. There is no public access here. I think everybody can agree that adding a cellar and kitchen is okay. You want to go down to the next space? <clears throat> this is the entire ground floor. What we are adding to the ground floor is the space all the way at the bottom most of the screen where it says bar. It is a space that was previously operated as the restaurant chefscape, but which is now halved. Um, it's at the corner of Hudson and Canal Street, um, the corner of the building. We're adding this space at a license and it's connecting to the rest of the building. So it's all part of the same license because we have to have it contiguous with the rest of the license. It's going to hold more intimate gatherings, small talks, discussions, small dinners, business events. There's no in exterior space here. There are windows do not operate, so they're not going to have any open windows. Um, and we'd be willing to restrict our hours on this space. Um, if it would help out the community board. Um, uh, how many, what, what's the, the capacity of that space spin? The capacity of the space, total capacity standing room only is 150. That's what the PA is. In that bar space, what's called the bar space. Um, you could call it the bar space. Well, we're just calling it the ground floor space. Uh, it is going to have mostly it's going to have seated table service there for events. If there was ever a standing room only, I think the PA is 150. And the entrance is on Hudson. The entrance is on Hudson closer to canal. You see where the building curves. That's where canal. Yeah, it. I know. I know the building. But why does it say entrance to. Uh, what I'm looking at, it says entrance street. They have two entrances. So if you look up uh, the top left hand of the screen where it says entrance 10 to Rosa Street and two. to the Rosa Street below it. Those yeah. are the current entrances to the building. If you go down further, that's the new space that we're adding where it says entrance Hudson Street. All that space in red. I mean, the whole thing is highlighted in red because it's all part of the license, but currently where it says entrance 10 to Brosa Street and entrance 2 to Brosa Street, that's already the entrances to the Tribeca rooftop. That's where you walk in and you take the elevators up. What we are adding is the bottom portion where it says entrance Hudson Street in that area, and it's just connecting to the rest of the building. Those are your lower lobby entrances, correct? Oh, that are correct. across from the residential area. Yes. With, sorry for interrupting. Would go there, right ahead. Would there ever be an opportunity to have instead of the entrance to two DeBrosis, is there a pathway to have an entrance on Hudson to lower the volume on DeBrosis for that particular venue? I don't believe so, but Billy, if if you think that's an option, I, I think logistically it would be challenging because it makes people walk through that narrow hallway that you see there. And, and kind of up a flight of stairs. Bill is having some trouble unmuting himself. So we're trying to figure that out now. I'm sorry, who? Uh, Billy Riley. Billy, Billy, oh, uh, yes. Somebody sent him a dial in for a phone, if that makes it easier. <laughs> um, for the sake of time, do you want to just keep moving through the spaces and then we can come yeah. back to problem areas? Yeah, because my question is whether or not any of the entrance that's out to Hudson, which is significantly less residential, could be used as an exit in any way. Okay, Billy will, I think Billy hears that, so he'll be able to respond to that. So this is the 11th floor. It's currently licensed. In two to four years, this entire floor is going away. 
it's being phased out. The landlord is taking back the space. This is 700 people here, and it's it's going away as part of this plan to consolidate um, the rest of the space. So we'll go down to the next one. You said two years. Uh, right now, it's 2000. Is it 2024 to 2026 24? is when that option is that the landlord can take it back. So there's your new proposed space. How many people can fit into that? So this is the 12th floor. We currently operate three quarters of this floor. If you look at it from where the curved bar is all the way down and around to where it says new proposed space, that's what we currently operate. We are adding that left-hand corner in. It's, a, it's an additional occupancy of 20 people. So we already operate the rest of the floor. This is now just bringing in that corner. So how much is the entire floor then? It'll be 720, 720 is each floor. So it's more, it's 20 more people? 20 yeah, more definitely. people. So we already had 700 there, and now we're adding 20, so that's 720. And when does the 700 that's below that go away? In the two to four 20, years. Yeah, 24, 26, or something like that. Two to four so, years, correct? Two to four years that the 11th floor goes away. The reason that we have to do this now with the adding in the 12th floor, this, this quarter of the 12th floor, is because it might be the only opportunity that we get. The landlord can rent the space out again to another person. It's, it's currently being operated as a photography studio. Um, so we have to consolidate the 12th floor because we're going to be losing the 11th floor. I'm just giving you an explanation. No, no, there, I got it. Is there a guarantee you're losing the 11th floor? We, I do not believe we have an option to get it back after that, that, that window that. I, I, I would want, I would want to know if you are definitely giving it up. We would definitely put into a stipulation that we are, are leaving the 11th floor in that time span. Do you want to go on to the last floor? Can I just interrupt for a second? So it means that for the next four years, theoretically, they can operate with this additional space of 20 people. Yes. <laughs> And then the the two hundred downstairs. Hello. And the two. We went. Yeah. Hello. One, one Don't fifty. That one. One fifty downstairs. Oh, I'm sorry. I am. I I, I, I missed it. So they're basically flipping floors. It's the same number, seven hundred, seven hundred. But well, we are we more. we already operate seven hundred on twelve right now. It's just adding right. at twenty. It's now getting rid of the seven hundred on eleven. And adding in, but you're not getting rid of the 700 on 11, Ben. Don't say that. We're right here listening to you. No, you're the next moving, two to four years, right. you are adding more Maybe. space. Maybe. Maybe. No, they're mm -hmm. moving. They're moving them up. This is presenting a long-term plan. I got space. it. I understand. But don't tell us you're not. You know, we we can add. No, no, no. Uh, over the next two years, yes, we will be able to operate in both spaces. Completely yeah. correct. And in addition to both those spaces, you're asking for 150 more. Wait, so uh, are we 150 plus 100 20 plus 150 more? I'm sorry, say that again. Let, let's be very clear. I want everybody to hear it before I answer. And then Francis, you speak and Mitchell can speak if he wants. They have they have 700 on 11. They have 700 on 12. You're going to add 20 on 11. Evan, the future. Right. All right. So that's 1420. And on the first floor, they have up to 150 more they are asking. Plus, I didn't even discuss the roof that they're going to add in there. I mean, even I, I, I've kind of ignored the roof as a whatever. So I, I just, you know, which is an additional group of folk, but the 150 in the new proposed space is what we're basically focusing on. Anything else, Francis, before I call on I, Mitch? I just want to, yeah, I just want to be clear on the numbers in terms of how, 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 you know, we're dealing with two floors. Are we dealing with 1400 people plus 100, uh, 700, 150 more downstairs? Yes. Ooh. Yes, and, and I want this to be real clear. That's it, kids. I and want 20. you all to hear it. You're dealing with 170 more. 
possibly. The addition for the alteration. Maybe if you give them the other floor, but yes, the real issue for the community and all of us is the 150 downstairs. Okay, and the violin is because the um, the owner is taking back the top floor, so they can't have that. So they can only have two floors instead of three. Well, they have the roof. He's not taking back the roof. I know, but that's one of the two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah. no, he's taking back only if he t if in two to four years it's the twelfth floor he's taking back. Eleventh floor. Eleventh floor. Sorry, I get so confused. Okay. <laughs> Um, if you want to go onto the rooftop, just so that we can complete this. Oh, go to it. Thank you. The rooftop, we already operate the entire rooftop. We are removing some mechanicals um, and we are putting in an interior structure. You can see it all the way on the left hand on the side of the screen. It says new interior space. Um, it's going to be fully enclosed. We're also moving our bar on the rooftop. It is currently on one of the walls and we are just moving it to the, I'm guessing it's the, the, um, West wall. And how many people will that be? Um, the current rooftop allows for 420 and I don't think that we're adding any more because we currently already operate the entire rooftop. So I think it's 420. Okay. Okay. Uh, any, uh, any questions, Mitchell? Or would you, uh, yes, I just, I wanted to just bring something up. If you wanted to bring some stipulations, Susan, I remember maybe about 5, 6 years ago. When they came for something else, so there was a bunch of residents that had complained that, you know, the security guys that working on the, you know, the streets, they basically were like they do in a lot of like clubs or discos. They were kind of holding up, holding up public spots, you know, whether with cones or just their own muscle from the residents that wanted to park there at night or on the weekends. And I think at that time they kind of, you know, poo pooed it, but I would like you to kind of put that in. Uh, and maybe have them agree to that, or at least put it in. So if they, if it's it's violated, there's some recourse. Thank you, Mitch. Anybody else before I call on the community members that are out there, who have been patient, patiently waiting? I have James, Justin, and Paul. So do we want to start with James? So if I could, I wanted to make a point about engagement that was made at the earlier application. We did reach out to 195 Hudson Street and specifically to the Andrews management company to try to set up meetings. Um, we've been engaging with uh, the building manager since uh, I would say August, uh, early August and answering questions via like email from all the residents. So I was just wanted to get that on the record because there was some statement previously that they had only heard about the application a week ago. So I'm not sure what, where that communication originated from. Susan, uh, just I, time check, 840. Okay, let's Thank go. You. Thank you, Matt. All right, uh, James, Justin, and Paul, we're gonna start with James, two minutes each, please, so I can get through that, we can get through this. James, you can go ahead. Yeah, hi, I hope you can hear me. So, um... So, you know, not much to really add to this. I mean, this is a disaster from a residential point of view. You know, you work hard, you buy an apartment in this place, and then, you know, stuff like this comes up. So I'm very appreciative that we have a, a board, a CB1 board that can actually filter through the, the um, uh, I can't tactics hear them. being used. Um, can you hear me? Well, you're a little vague, but I, I, I did hear you. He sounds muffled. Yeah, well, it, it's he's claiming it's a disaster. They spoke. He's glad CB one's on top of it, uh, but my that that he is against all of the at least the ground floor. Am I correct, James? Well, so it's the ground floor that they're talking about, the basement to the new chef's gate thing. I know it's separated by a floor, but I mean, this is now looking at just shy of well not far off 2,000 people, right? 700 and 700 and 420 and 150. I mean, maybe I'll- Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. this is a, I mean, how can this even be feasible? I understand there's a process, but, you know, it, it's, it's just gobsmacking that a person that reportedly cares for the community and takes care of it what, can actually do this. Also, I found out about this four days ago. 
So I want to go on the record stating that I found out about this four days ago and I am a resident. You know, the same, the same concerns can uh, apply, right? Okay. Uh, we, we've known this guy, Billy Riley, for a long time. He's okay. not trustworthy. There is nothing that, in the steps, unfortunately, you know, they're very hard to enforce, right? So meanwhile, our quality of life is just degraded to the point where we you know we can't get into, we can't park our cars, we can't get into the garage, we're kept up all night, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you know the script. I don't need to repeat. Yes. So, okay. I, Thank, I you. Thank you, James. Thank you. To, to understand. All right, Justin, go to it. Justin, you can go ahead. Justin. You have to unmute having... yourself. So I'm sorry, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. You can. Go do it. Hi. So so I'm sorry. So like I said, this is our lives, this is our children's lives. I didn't hear a two minute sort of bell on anybody else. So I really appreciate the community board just hearing me out. I'm not gonna go much longer than two minutes, but if it's thirty seconds longer, I, I would just like to go on record as saying this was this was an absolute set up on their part because they, they first started talking about it late August to the management company. Everyone was away. I personally asked them to move the meeting. They gave us one week's notice to, to quote unquote meet. I asked them to move the meeting to next month so that the community can engage with them. They refused. I would just like that on the record. But I, I can just tell you, you know, I think I sent a bunch of pictures over of what goes on in that street. It is unconscionable on a daily, weekly basis. There is nonsense going on out there. The cops get called. There is noise. Kids wake up. Our building is 30 yards away from this place. I just think the fact that, you know, I don't actually care what they're doing on the upstairs, 11th floor, 12th floor, let them slice it into 50 different spaces. It doesn't matter to me. That ground floor, it's going to be like, why don't we just rename DeBrosia Street Billy Riley Street? I mean, we cannot have 2,000 capacity parties on a residential neighborhood with kids sleeping. It's a disaster out there. There's absolutely no security. There is no security, or if they are, they're standing around picking their nose, because I've not seen a single crowd control. I sent a, a Dropbox full of pictures. You guys can just take a look for yourselves what goes on. Literally last night, or two nights ago, there was another party. These guys do this consistently. You cannot, they have a horrendous, horrendous, horrendous reputation in the neighborhood, as you're hearing. This just can't be allowed. Our lives are miserable enough with the two event spaces, adding a third one on the ground floor, no less, on the ground floor is gonna be a complete disaster and it's gonna make the space completely unlivable. We're all about chef space. I even said before, I have no problem with a nice restaurant, but what they're gonna do with this space, operating under Tribeca rooftop, they're gonna come out from the party and they're gonna fill up this one as an after hours party and the club and the party are just gonna continue on into the hour, into the, into the night. And it, it, it is absolutely untenable. It cannot be allowed. They're playing games with a sleight of hand. And thank you, Madam Chairman. You read right through it. They're playing games. Oh, we're closing this. We're doing that in 2026. And maybe this and maybe that. They cannot be trusted. They cannot be allowed. They have a horrendous reputation and they should not be rewarded with additional space. They should not be rewarded with additional latitude and leeway to destroy our lives because that is what they do. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Justin. Uh, in, in addition, I just want to say that I actually do have the folder with uh, the photos that Justin referenced. If the if the committee would like me to share, uh, sure. Go right ahead, quick. But let's let Paul speak while you're sharing. Sure, Paul, you can unmute. Hi. First of all, I haven't really participated in one of these meetings before, and I just want to. Compliment all of you for your stamina and for your patience in going through all this. It's very impressive and I appreciate your concern for the community. I really just want to underscore what's been said previously. Um, I think it's kind of baffling to even consider an increase in capacity given the reputation and the issues. Um, to Tammy's point, there have been police reports and 311 calls. And so if you all can advise us on additional or further steps that can be taken beyond police reports and 311 calls, I think that would be useful for the neighbors and we'd certainly be happy to organize along whatever steps are useful. And then to yeah. the ground floor point, I just want to underscore the ground floor point in particular, which is there is clearly a plan here around after parties and moving after parties down to the ground floor 
takes an event space that is already extremely disturbing and disruptive to the neighborhood and exacerbates that. And it's made all the worse, as I mentioned previously, because of the delineators on Hudson restricting the vehicle flow, the situation at that corner of Debrosis and Hudson, and they want to talk about the corner of Hudson and Canal, but as you can see on all these plans, the key corner is the corner of Debrosis and Hudson, and it's just not a safe intersection right now. And I would encourage any of you to go check it out for yourselves. And I would certainly, last point, just remind you that that shared wall between this flex space after party venue and the restaurant that was proposed in item two on your agenda, we really need to understand what's going on in that shared wall and make sure that you guys aren't getting duped here on the restaurant and that the restaurant isn't going to be further overflow out of this flex space on the ground floor. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. All right, um, uh, let's do the user, uh, the call, and then I want to stop this. And I, I have an idea, and I, I, I want the committee to, uh, Francis, you want to say something, go to it. Unmute, unmute, unmute. Um, in terms of the issue that the community is feeling about them using the new space uh, um, um, using the the what the chef space as a, a overflow for their their after party. If the chef space has specific guidelines in terms of when they can operate, you know, and and the other space comes down later. I mean, that would be a that would to use the space that would be. In violation, well, yes, that will be in our in our uh, stipulation in the stipulation and the rest yeah, and of that the they should be they should <laughs> they should yeah, be yeah. but I, I I think the 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 real question is uh, 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 uh let Tammy speak uh, are you uh, done, Francis yes before uh before I hand it over to Tammy uh we do have one more uh person all right. Two like minutes, please. I'm uh, past Two minutes. My time. I've got nine o'clock, and this this item is going to be done one way or another. Go to it. Please unmute, and you can speak the caller who's on the phone. And tell us who you are. If not, we'll be moving on. Okay. Okay. All right, Tammy, go to it. Can you hear oh. me? Oh, yes, we can. Yes. Who are you? Sorry. Sorry, my name is Eileen Montague. I've been living um, at 195 Hudson Street since 1999. Um, so I just wanted to quickly um, run through a couple of things. The first thing is that we heard from the owner, um, uh, lawyer, PR people with a very confusing proposal uh, as Justin pointed out at the end of August. Um, at that point, they were mainly talking about Chefscape, um, which is obviously the easiest thing to to look at here and, and the most attractive for the neighborhood. Um, they very quietly slipped in this flex space, but didn't spend much time on it and kind of obfuscated things. Um, we had to, we, we certainly, we looked at it, we, we, and we quickly sniffed that this was gonna be the issue and we had to chase them on answers, which we got yesterday. We got those answers yesterday. Um, so now we have two large event spaces which cause a ton of congestion from buses, from black cars, from, you know, we have noise pollution, we have garbage, um, and that those garbage deliveries are occurring way before eight o'clock in the morning, okay? And, and we're woken up on a regular basis. We have deliveries going to these two event spaces. Now we're gonna have deliveries going to Chefscape and to this ground floor space. Um, we have valet situations, um, and just tons of people. Okay, so now You're you want to add on an time. event. Okay. Oh God. I, 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 so I, I, yeah, go on. Listen, Give us a the, the issue here is that we live on Desprosa Street. This is a very short street. Now we have a hotel right at the end of the street. Like it's unsustainable to actually give these guys. 150 capacity event space on the ground floor. Would anybody else in Tribeca get this? 
I mean, it's unbelievable. It's like I can't even believe that we're having this conversation about it when okay. they have they're being they're actually even we're considering rewarding a group that has just caused so much aggravation and stress. We're you know apart from that building, everybody else on here is a resident. You know, this is a residential street, and okay. it's too much. Then so I, I, I thank I, you. I, I, I thank we hear you. Thank you. Tammy, go to it, and then I'm going to propose something. Question from the owners. Is there any way that the additional space that they're looking for can exit on Hudson or Canal and be used? No, they told us no. They, they said it wasn't easy, but that doesn't mean that not, uh, uh, Okay. We can direct people to exit on Canal. Oh, yeah, right. That and a token. I'm sorry, Tammy. But, but it, is, it is the question to ask as to after X number X PM at night, whether all traffic can be directed out to canal. All traffic. You right. mean from the whole space, from everything. From all 14,000, all the people. Okay, Matt, answer. To, to reiterate, yes, we can direct people over to the Canal Street ent entrance exit when exiting events, yes. For the entire building. Don't say something that's not going to happen, kiddo. Yeah, you, you've asked us if we can do that. I'm, I'm answering in the affirmative. Yes, we can. So the question is great. Good to hear. And then the question starts to become, I don't care if the entrance is the entrance, but if we can say after X hour, all exits will be done on Canal Street. Because that certainly sounds like a winner. The entrance is a problem as well, Tammy. You Bill saw people is, lining up look, look, as well. Susan, if look, you could Susan, unmute him, he could speak to that as well. Okay. Before Billy does, Susan, understand that, I mean, this is like you arrive to a restaurant, you're usually on the sober side. You leave from a restaurant, you've had a full meal and something to drink. Okay. It's, the, it's people arrive with their transport. It's the people hanging out, waiting for cabs, waiting for Ubers, waiting for the rest of it. It's the breakdown of the events. It's all the things that I understand, go with that. Tammy. If you can not have a lot of faith. Right. But go on. Okay. Uh, 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 Pat. You can't get a, I'm, hi, Matt. You can't get a car on Canal Street. So even no, though it's not, it's a, it's a moot point. Tammy. Right. So even if they exit on Canal Street, they're going to go back to Hudson or Disprosis to get their car. And Hudson is a problem as they well. They can get picked now. up on the corner of Hudson and Canal, right there, and it would take the the pain off of debrosis, which is what we're hearing. Okay, Pat, do you have something else to say? So, this is my proposal. I don't care if they could have all the other space. They've got it. They're going to increase by twenty. I, uh, unless somebody wants to propose it differently, I am, uh, uh, I'm loath to give them the ground floor space. Uh, I, I can't, and, and we'll have to write a letter. We'll have to really bring this up with our resolution. I just think the community, the, the talking to you, Pat, the quality of life, everything about it, it doesn't work. We are talking the about ground floor space until they release 11. Oh, well, that's an interesting point, Tammy. Aren't you smart? That's why you're chair, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I, I would, uh, 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 when they no longer are going to have 11, that's fine. We can look at it again, but, uh, uh, and I would even put that in the resolution, but I am not going to give them this space. Me personally, I will uh, accede to the committee, but my proposal is that we do not approve the ground floor space for flex space or anything. And that our resolution will say that we will certainly review this when they have to give up the 11th floor and they've shown us that they can have, that they are exiting their population on Canal and Hudson, Tammy. How is that? But I am, uh, 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 I am proposing that we do not approve this space. Um, so I need to call the question and I need a, okay, Karen, you're well, on mute. Hold the question. I'm about to leave, so okay, I'd like to I want to have the vote. Uh, uh, 
A second? I second. Okay. So, any nays? Any recusals? Any abstentions? Okay. We are we are rejecting this application. Thank you and thank you everybody for testifying. Okay, let's go. We got a few more. Goodbye, Karen. We've got Stone Street. We've got the seaport. I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, you know, I don't, I like a shorter meeting, but what can I tell you? Uh, um, 11 Stone Street has an application and I have a question for them. <clears throat> yeah, show us the front of the seat. <laughs> You want to see the front? Okay. Good. Yeah, I, I, I want to see the. Uh, what I'm confused. You can hardly see the front because of all the. Well, I'm looking at the on on. A look on my computer. All right. So, this is for Eleven Stone Street, which is the. Uh, it's a hotel. It's a hotel, right? It's a hotel. Mm-hmm. Love it's a hotel it. with lounges on the 30th and 31st floor, which is what I have issues with because they want to be open until 2 a.m. No. I know. Uh, um, Francis, I also see a picture of some outdoor lounge space on a lower floor with some kind of chairs and like a box, like a, like box type structures to sit on, like a, maybe right. about a two or three like floors a, up. Like it looks like a, a, a balcony on a right. Uh, right. Probably the um, uh, um, part of the the restaurant, or because I know that can't be on the top floor because I saw that too. But they have a lounge, right? That's outdoors on the thirtieth and 30th. right. So it's to see if anything is going to be developed there, like that would be late at night or something like that. You know? Yeah. There's one question. Okay, thank you. All right. And they also have out. They they they're they're saying that they're going to do outside promoting. And is it, you know, is it going to be for the rooftop? Um, Are you, uh, is this related to the mint? Uh, 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 yes, it is. Yes, 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 yes. it is. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. So make, let's go through the presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, so this is going to be an extension, uh, uh, a hotel extension. I mean, it's the same company. Am I correct? It's the Mint on Pine Street. Am I right, or not? I I don't know. It... Is somebody here from the Mint, Lewis? Yeah, let me just, Lewis. Uh, can you raise your hand if you are here for this application so that I can just find you? Yes, thank you. Uh, you can unmute. Are you the only representative here tonight? Yes, I am. I am the representative. Okay. I am the asset manager for the ownership group. Hi, good evening, Susan, and good evening, board members. Uh, some of you may remember uh, that I first presented in front of you four years ago, back in 2018, when Hotel FIDI was under construction. I came back six months later uh, looking for an addendum, at which time you, uh, to paraphrase, uh, told me that, Lou, you're not open yet. There's no body of work. Uh, the same hours will be maintained on your liquor license. Uh, shortly after that, six, seven months later, as we were still going through construction, COVID hit and the project was closed down. We are now about inside of 30 days of opening where we will have, as other board members have mentioned, we will have an enclosed bar on the 30th, which segues up into the 31st floor. It's not open air, it's closed. Uh, the terrace doors remain locked. The capacity is a um, 1,000 square feet on the 30th and 31st. And as another board member mentioned, we have a, a lounge on the second floor, which has 1,400 square feet and an additional 300 square feet of outsort, outside, excuse me, terrace space that will close at eight o'clock every night. This will be a lifestyle hotel, a boutique, 
uh, one of the few that's down in the financial district. Uh, Lewis, you're not related to the uh, the mint on Pine Street. No, not the mint on Pine Street. No, that's correct. So this is so the rooftop venue is named Spare Change. And the venue, the the restaurant, and the lounge upstairs is the mint. Oh, that's where I saw the mint. I saw. It. I knew I saw yeah, it someplace. That's correct. So the trade name is Spare Change. Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, the the company is incorporated as Mint at FIDI Incorporated. So the hotel establishment is called Hotel Fidei. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a venue upstairs called Spare Change and the Mint is the restaurant off the lounge. And then there is a, uh, on the second floor is, is an extension of the Mint, which is an open air lounge with light fare, which uh, will be kind of a venue for like afternoon, early evening until we shut the, uh, the outdoor terrace. When do you intend to shut oh, the outdoor so terrace? Yeah. At at eight p.m. Go on, Francis. That's for the. Uh, is that for the thirtieth and thirty first floors, and also the 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 balcony on the second floor? Or uh no, Francis. Eight p.m. would be the the time on the second floor, uh, in the mint that we would close the terrace doors. So when you say open air on the thirtieth and thirty first floors. No, no, uh, the 30th and 31st are actually enclosed. This is not an open air rooftop. It's just the okay. upper, it's just the upper 2 floors of the building. So, it's misnamed or something, whatever. So, yeah, spare change is a. Multi floored lounge. Oh, okay. 2000 square feet, 1000 per floor. 30th and 31st floor. That's correct. Uh, okay. Uh, keep going. Oh, no. And this is open to everybody and the hotel guests. Uh, Susan, yes, but primarily we expect the majority of the volume to be from our hotel guests, right? We're not okay. running a nightclub. Stop here, Onish. Okay. So, we're not going to give you till 2 a.m. Let's just right. cut cut the, the chase, okay? It's just not going to happen. Um, and certainly not for the first year. We've got to see how it all works. So, the bar service closes at 12 a.m., right? You want the food service till 2 a.m. Are you going to deliver? You're going to deliver food to rooms. Are you not? Yes. Yes, we are. So you don't need 2 a.m. on the 30th and 31st floor. So I would we, recommend. We are, we are offering, excuse me uh, for interjecting. We are offering a light fare uh, upstairs on at in spare change, which is why we wanted to keep the operation open until 2 a.m. And still offer the light fare and you know food up there on 30 and 31. But no drinks, except you can order your last four drinks at 12 o'clock and sit there until 2 a.m. and have light fare and four could I could could I plead with you until 1 a.m.? This is the third time in front of the community board in four years. We still haven't opened our doors. <laughs> I'll I'll concede to my committee. Uh, I'll see what they say. <laughs> okay. I, I'm the tough nut, so you you uh, uh, if they want to give you till one a.m. Uh, uh, Sunday night, no. No, no, no. Sunday night, I I believe if um, I'm just looking at my notes as well. So uh, Sunday, I was looking just to midnight. <laughs> Francis, Sunday is usually till what? Sundays till ten. Yeah, and they want. Me I'll done? give you till eleven on 11, Sunday. Eleven, it's fine. That's eleven. Uh, we'll uh, compromise. Uh, we'll uh, we'll 11. compromise. Sunday eleven. 
since it's inside, it's in the hotel. I appreciate that, Francis. Uh, <laughs> You, but, you but, but but Francis, the world has changed now in New York. You do understand now that Sunday is no longer really uh, an anxiety Sunday where let's get ready for work and let's get ready for school. People are well, enjoying it. Well, I heard bus. on Brian Lehrer the other day. It's that's everybody right. suffering from that. That's right. You know what? <laughs> we right. we, so, we leisure um, customers. <laughs> I think what we're going to do is uh, we'll give you till 1 a.m. All right, Francis? Okay. On the other days. 1 a.m. Um, on the weekdays? Yeah. Well, that's very. Uh, uh, 1 a.m. on the weekends, rather. Uh -huh. on a, oh, sorry, on, the weekends. Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. Yeah, and we'll give you till uh, Sunday is Sunday. 11, and we'll give you till midnight on uh, 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 Monday to Thursday. Monday, Thursday, Friday. Monday to Thursday. Monday to Thursday. Midnight, Monday to Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's it, right? Uh, I think that's it. Hopefully, I next come to you with a body of work of being open where I ask for your. Uh, well, let's hope you do. All right. Good luck. And Thank garbage you. collection. You've had. Uh, uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I do have you. You you had you you indicated that you're going to be doing some outside promotions. Well, I, I think really what we, and Francis, if you're asking that question, really what I mean by outside, we'll really be doing outside marketing. Right, so we're looking to pursue relationships with Fortune 100 companies where we can host events on the second floor. That would be uh, day events, meeting events, which would lead to them breakouts and early cocktail receptions on the second floor. The second floor, you're going to so close then at you 8 should say, I'll, I'll, Right, I'll, correct. The event would not go beyond that. That's correct. Okay. Outside promoting for corporate. Uh, yeah, for corporate. Clients. Yep. Corporate buyouts. So well, you, we won't be seeing people on the corner handing out flyers. Right, exactly. No, no, no. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's what I want to and, and they won't be wearing sandwich boards either. Oh, that's good. <laughs> At my age, I've seen them. Anyway, uh one other okay. question garbage collection. Uh, we will be in compliance with our, our local waste management company. I believe we probably have a relationship already with IESI where they pick up, um, uh, th that'll be bundled with our garbage collection for the hotel, which is picked okay. up early morning on stone street. Okay. Um, cause stone street is busy there too. It you is, it, you know, it, it is. Uh, so hopefully everybody's doing it together. Yeah. And deliveries too, right? And uh, yeah, uh, no recorded music. Uh, no live music. Uh, recorded music up on thirty and thirty one. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else? I appreciate your consideration. Please remember me next time I come in front of you. <laughs> I may not be there, but somebody else will remember you. So, any uh, may I have a call the question and uh, a second? To call the question. Hopefully, we have enough people. Second. Jill, turn your camera on. Second. Yes. Sir. Okay. Thank uh, you. Any recusals? Rejections? Uh, abstentions. Okay. So we're one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we're only five, Tammy. We may have to take this in front of the, but, but we pass it. Okay. I, I would be your sixth vote tonight. Okay. Thank so you. So Tammy's voting. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lewis. Bye. Bye bye. All right. Then we have. Okay. Oh. 69 Greenwich. That's incomplete. I was I found that incomplete. Yeah, I did too. I'd like to have them come back in October. Does anybody hear from them? Is yes, anybody... Michael. Yes, give me a one moment. There we go. Uh Michael, you can unmute. I died at this point. Uh it was I, I did email on DJ this earlier this afternoon. I, I reviewed it. And I saw that there was an issue with our application that does the signatures and it removes information. I did send it to her and it was still were being removed and I sent it again. And I'm hoping that it came through um, nope. at this point. 
It's still we have nothing. We don't have it. That's why we're saying it's incomplete. Can uh, can you come back in October? Because we have nothing, and I don't have the time. It's too late, and you're not gonna. You're gonna get short shrift yep. on this one. Uh, I I do understand. I'm understand. sorry, Michael. If you uh, if you had emailed me uh, this afternoon, there's no way I could have. Uh, it's too late, I, Michael. Yeah, it's too late. to do it before. We need it at least a week before. We don't. It's not fair to of my staff uh, 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 or any of us. So I will put you over till October. I I do respect that. We've been waiting for three hours at this point, though. I I'm so sorry, but I you know I we take them in order, but you also didn't do what you're supposed to do. So that's the way it's going to have to be. Thank you. We'll put you on for October. And we can try and put them first then. Yeah, we'll put okay. you first. We'll put you first in October. I promise. All right. I, I appreciate that. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Okay. Right. 14 okay, wall. 14 wall. <laughs> caviar boutique. Yes, the caviar. Let's go. Everybody. Uh, question, Mr. Then. Caviar, are you here? Uh, if you are here, please raise your hand. Thank Zachary. you, Zachary. Okay, so you, can, you may unmute. Zachary, I have a few questions very quickly before we go through this, so, because uh, some of it's a little confusing. Where will people go to the bathroom? Zachary, you have Please, to you need to unmute. Uh, he's still on. He's still muted. Uh, Zachary, you'll need to unmute yourself. Uh, you, I promoted you to panelist to make things easier. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. We can. Right, great. So Zachary, number one. Yes. Where will people go to the bathroom? All right. So um, there is uh, there are two public bathrooms, so to so to say, public, but they're for employees only. But uh, you have to pass down to the basement level where the employee has a chip card that she or he can hand to any patron. And they could then pass down to the basement to use the restroom. Okay. So you are in you are in a building, right? And how many seats are you going to have? Well, we don't intend to have many seats at all. Actually, we don't really need them. We have one table that could fit two seats could do two tables that could fit, fit another mm, round of chairs or it's not really planned for people to, you know, uh, to dine in, for example, it's a, it's a retail store first and foremost. So. And, but you serve beer and wine. Um, well, we're applying for a beer, wine and cider license, but we really want to focus on the champagne because that's what pairs best with caviar. So. It's really mostly a complimentary thing where we can hand people, you know, a glass of champagne to welcome them or for them to enjoy it with the caviar. So okay. it's not liquor for purchase. Uh, it's an on-premise uh, license. So technically we could integrate it into uh, some type of tasting menu, which we definitely want to do. We want to do tasting sets, sample sets that, you know, could include the, the price of Champagne, but we haven't fully developed that strategy just yet. For now, it's really our priority to get to get the permission to even, you know, have the on premise. Uh, uh, how many people can you have in there? Right. It's not a big, big, uh, big uh, location and we're quite happy no. about that. We don't need a lot of space and the less seating area we have, the more space we the more space we have to to host people, but we don't anticipate it to be, you know, a busy bustling and bustling um, premises and you know it's hard for us to even say today it really depends on the community if they enjoy coming down to our place and the more the merrier we like to say but of course it's not a big space so I don't think we'll have a problem with huge crowds and uh, we want to keep it civil either way uh. I, so what's the maximum amount of people that can well, stand in that little space? Ironically enough, in the certificate of occupancy, it says 80 people. I don't know how yes. you got that number. 
but I don't think there will be that many people. We'd be happy if we could fit 15, 20 people in there comfortably. You know, people that will come down uh, post work to network, to meet up, to mingle, to try our caviar, to be in that social setting. That's what we're envisioning, really. And it's totally indoors. There is nothing outdoors. Yes, that's right. Uh, keep going, uh, Onesh. Okay. Keep stop stop. So you want you want to your hours are you're going to do Sunday? It, it, it's an office building, is it not? Okay. Well, we would only let you operate on Sunday anyway. Our our rule of thumb is to 10 p.m. I don't think anybody will be there, but well, who knows? I wouldn't want to underestimate that because from what I'm understanding, the, the area is changing. It's becoming, to a certain extent, more residential. And we would like people to come even on a Sunday to, you know, okay. it depends uh, from, I, realistically speaking, I don't think people will come. Post 10, 10, uh, 10 p.m., you're right, to a certain extent. Maybe it won't happen, but we'd like to keep that option open if possible. I, I understand you would, but we're going to give you till 10, and you can come back. Okay. All right? We'll and we'll leave your other hours as they are. That's on Sundays, and then the rest of Only Sundays. The rest we're leaving for you. Very good. Okay. okay. Anybody have any other questions so I can... I'm I'm fascinated. We'll all go by because we're curious. Absolutely. Um, my pleasure to welcome all of you. Uh, can I ask what um, you have a a written menu? Can you give us like a price range? Well, as you know, with caviar, it can be from two. But uh, we, as a company, as a family-owned business in third generation now, starting with my grandfather, my father, and myself now. We have this vision of actually bringing this product to to the people. People like me, you know, that have no clue. Really, I mean, sure, it's 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 inherently expensive. It's not a pound of cheese that costs you five dollars. Let's say it's a pound of caviar. It's going to cost a lot more. It's hard to produce. It's a scarce good. But um, number. Yeah, but we we'd be uh, we're we're trying to bring a better price than what's out there at the moment, and we've already been doing that. That is. Oh, well, the price <laughs> per pound it could be just a ballpark figure. Tell me what I'm looking at. Am I looking at fifty no, to a hundred just to walk in the door, or what? You know, well, I what we're no gonna food. do is something that's very unique. I think we're gonna let people try our caviar, even if they just come in, and if they're interested, we'll let them try. Okay, it. how much am I have to pay to try it? Nothing. Twenty five dollars. Have to pay anything to try. It. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, and yeah, but a pound of caviar could be easily go for around $400. Yes, it could. Trying to buy a pound. Yeah, Which so is a good price. A, the you know, and a pound goes a long way. Anyway, uh, are there any Thank questions you. for uh, any more? Can I have a call the question? Call the question. A second. Uh, so we do not have quorum at this time. <laughs> No need with we're one short of quorum. Let's see. We are one short of quorum. Uh, we have to check because you have uh, a couple people who dropped off without saying anything. The only one I know who said something was um, Karen. Right. Karen so and Jerome. I he said he, when um, he would leave. Jerome, yes, yeah, Jerome did say he would leave. And around. I don't know. She. Uh, nobody said goodbye. Right. But yeah. uh, we may have to bring this up to the executive committee. But we're gonna all let uh, we can. You said it a thousand times, Susan. You can't leave without announcing the left, and they should have checked with you. So, I'm texting Joel to please log back on. Okay. Yeah, that'd be very nice if we could get it passed. I'm looking. I was waiting for this uh, meeting. Well, so we know you were. To, I'm uh, sorry. In the sense that I was waiting to to submit my application to the SLA, I would. So when do you my... plan on opening? We want to open. Uh, we're already quite delayed. Um, it's costing us a good amount of money, but that's okay. We'll, once we're open, we'll be happy. So uh, another maybe two months. So I have enough time to get the temporary in the meantime, hopefully, if I push it. I really hope that we can get a temporary one for the opening. Okay. Okay, so. All right. Well, we all will vote for it, Tammy. Uh, so I'm just, I'm waiting for 
I'm waiting for Joel. With no additional st stipulations. I'm sorry for cutting you. Sorry. I'm sorry for cutting you. Now, will everyone here is in favor with how everything is right now? I think everybody is. Yes. Okay. Oh, Mitchell, you're um, back. No, I've never left. Oh. He never. He was there. Oh, I didn't know. No. I, I didn't see him. Okay, so uh, there are no recusals. There are no uh, 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 abstentions. We're all in favor. Oh, Nash. Where is Joel? I don't see him anywhere. Not there. He's there. He's another one that dropped off. Oh, all right. So hold on. Let me take a look. Uh, and she dropped off, right? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. All right, let's get to the South Street Seaport before I drop, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't know if we can. Uh, we can't until we have quorum. Correct. So mm. we have to bring it up at the. Uh, uh, we have to get one more person back tonight. We can take a five minute break and try and get people back. Um, or... You want to try and get Chi back? Yep. I'm sorry for the last two applicants, Jean Georges and uh, uh, France, the other one, the which is pretty okay. She's just they're just they're on front street. Yeah, but they're like both of them are okay. Uh, I don't have any so. trouble. Yeah. Uh, you know, liquor takes a long time sometimes. And we're earlier than CB2 that goes to 11 routinely. So, I mean, people I, need I know. Mm. Why? Because of the number or the discussion? Discussions. Mm. Yeah, I well, could see that. Definitely see that. Um, so, is anybody here from... Uh, 96 South Street, Israel, and Barbara. Barbara's the lawyer. You know, we love Barbara. Uh, uh, what would you like to ask Barbara? Oh, no, I was going to talk. Barbara's about... always here. <laughs> Hi. I was gonna Hi, Barbara. Have... I'm sorry, Barbara. I've missed you over the summer, but I'm here. I, I know. And I, I don't think there's an issue for us with... Uh, 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 um, South Street, um, the Jean George, just to explain to everybody sure. uh, what it's going to be so sure. that we can at least take it to the. Uh, Have you uh, been there yet? The, the tin building by Jean George opened in August. Yeah. Um, it's three story food hall. It's currently only operating Thursday through Sunday, 10 to 6. Uh, obviously, you know, as 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 the rollout goes, you know, it'll be open more more often. Um, however, for the time being, what they've realized is even with the number of bars that were licensed already, there is a need to license a couple, a few more of the food counters. So this application is basically to license three of the existing food counters that already have alcohol service available to them by server, but by getting it licensed as a stand-up bar, it allows the person on the other side of the food counter just hand the drink over versus service staff coming around the other side. It's a very technical requirement. So there's no space being added or removed or altered. The footprint exactly stays the same. It's just the method by which um, alcohol is served across the counter. So it's a, just so a technical that means, requirement. Wait, so we understand one another. So that means I can take my alcohol and go out on the pier and out on the street and walk around with it. No, that, that that's not what it means. Actually, the, the, what this, the technical aspect of this application is that there are food counters that patrons sit at to have, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner. But currently, if they order an alcoholic beverage, a server has to come from a licensed bar in a different location, bring it across the floor to them by, by allowing these 3 additional food counters to become stand up bars when they order a beverage. The person on the other side of the food counter can simply hand it to them over the counter as opposed to a server having to come around. So these are existing food counters that are already in service. It's just permitting the ser um, permitting the sort of food service to give the drink across the counter. And then we're adding a service bar, which is just, you know, another bar where, where individuals can prepare the drinks. I, I, I don't have any trouble with it. Does anybody? 
No, I have some questions. I, trouble with I, I can't say I understand it questions. either. All right, go to it, Mariama. Ask and then Francis. Yeah, I just want to make sure that Israel is unmuted as well because he represents I, the, the tenants. I am here. Okay, yeah. I am here. Right. I'm just listening. I, I feel like I don't have any trouble with that. I just don't understand it. I mean, I have been there, and there were there. So there's like a number of, like very specific, restaurants. You know, there's yes. right, right. Where are these counters? I, I don't. Know, I can't picture it. So the food counters already exist on on the property. There are some of the sort of eating yeah. establishments, um, but currently, if patrons order from these three specific locations. Then a server has to come from a bar that is not that food counter right. to bring the beverage because that's not technically licensed as a bar. It's only a food counter. So we're just asking that these three food counters also be allowed to have alcohol there so that the servers don't have to bring them. Okay, so you're saying like this, I, I guess I, di I didn't notice them. I could walk up to a standalone bar and order from somebody and they'd have to go to like the Japanese restaurant to get my drink. Yeah, wait, so right. right. So uh, currently there are there are so the yeah. taco place. Right. Okay. Correct. The taco Correct. place would not be able to they would not be able to give you the margarita or whatever you ordered there. They'd have I to see. go to okay. the Japanese place. And get it and bring it to you. Yeah, exactly. It makes it logistically it. easier it. from a service standpoint. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Francisco. Uh, it has nothing to do with alcohol. It has to do, I've been, I've been there. It's a very nice, uh, very overwhelming uh, <laughs> space. Um, and I read some place where it said something about three floors, and there's I only saw the rooftop is not open yet, right? Or do you plan on having a rooftop? No. Rooftop is only mechanical. It's not. So for, yeah, what is it? Yes. It's a uh, there's a first, commissary second, and third kitchen. floor. Third floor is a commissary kitchen. Uh, it's not oh. guest accessible. The first okay. two floors. Are it's only the first two floors. I went and I was in in one of my moods and I said I'll come back because oh, okay. it is overwhelming. It's it looks yeah, it is very. It is. it is. It is very, very overwhelming. It's packed tight with a lot of stuff, with a lot of stuff. Um, um, well, you know, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, anything, anybody else? No, I'm going to say, I'm going to pop in here and say, without quorum, what we should do is take a straw poll. Okay. The two that do not get resolutions have to go to executive okay. and then we move on because. That's uh, right. We only have one more, Tammy. That's right. That's right. So. Okay. Uh, so can I have a straw poll? Everybody, uh, I figure everybody agrees. If you don't, raise your hand. Okay, Barbara, we'll take it to executive and Israel. And thank you. That's all right. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. And thanks for hanging in. And I really appreciate the licensing committee people who stay. For those that have to leave early, you know, we're virtual. I don't know if everybody has seen the new uh, emails that have come out from the state and the city. No. Uh, we're going to be in person pretty soon, so I saw she lifted it, but I wasn't. I was looking I for. Didn't see it either. Uh, uh, okay. She looked at the ruling we're under city so far, and the borough president's giving us a ruling if monkeypox qualifies to allow us to go virtual beyond <gasps> next week. So it's going to be hybrid, right? Yeah, but the board members got to go in person, for the most part. You have to have quorum in person. And I'm going to be extraordinarily restricted for. Yeah, you, we're going to have to be there. I know that. Uh, I mean, let me uh, let me ask something. Uh, d nobody has any trouble. Uh, let's talk about 226 Front Street. Uh, uh, is, the, is there somebody here from 226 Front Street? Bless your heart if you've stayed. Made oh, Victor Chan. Victor, talk very quickly. <laughs> I'm sorry, but tell us about your space. The bake shop uh, has a bake. Wait, it was. Yeah, it says fresh baked bread. It's fresh it baked seems bread. fine, but you want to serve wine and beer and alcohol. And how late do you want to stay open? I see That's ten p.m. Ten o'clock. Yeah. I, I own a Sutaishi restaurant that uh, has been here since uh, two thousand five, and we uh, are the owners of uh, Made Fresh Daily, which currently changed to an Indian restaurant. We were destroyed by her uh, by the COVID-19 
uh, Maitre Deli was, and we reinvented ourselves to uh, oh. an Indian uh, restaurant. Good for you. Buy book, buy that too <laughs> fast, then. Thank you. Yeah. So, so we um, uh, we, we, it's called Tagmo Indian Kitchen, and uh, it's a women majority owned uh, business, uh, minority business, and um, and we currently have a beer wine license, and we're asking. Um, uh, with the demand of uh, of our customers, at the request of our customers, um, a full liquor license. I don't have any trouble. Does anybody <laughs> have any trouble? I can't get a drink on Front Street, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Sharon's been gone less than twenty minutes. He's on the way back. All right. He's in the process of logging in. We can vote all three. He can abstain oh. if he's not comfortable. Okay. All right, I don't uh, do I have any I, I I think this is acceptable to all of us, is it mm -hmm. not? Why not? Uh, let's have a call and a second. Give me a second. Call a question. Second print. Okay. Wait till Darren Monson. He's getting right. well, he's well I up. have the question called. We don't have to go further. I mean, we'll wait for the voting. Yes. That's right. And you're that calling, be nice. And Susan, procedurally, you're calling all of the ones that we have discussed together, correct? Yes, right. Thank you. <laughs> I am. Thank you, Mr. Cheney. God bless them all for staying. Yeah. It's only two. It's not three, Tammy. Oh, okay. I don't count well at this hour. That's why I'm drinking water. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'd like to go get some water myself. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't see it. Jerome's not whatever. He's coming. He's dialing. What? I, I suspect he's, you know, juggling kids and computer all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ned. You've done a mm. fabulous job all by yourself. You were terrific. Um, we're very lucky to have her. I'm saying that out loud. <laughs> All right, let's most wait welcome, one most welcome. minutes Absolutely. so we can get out of here. Mm -hmm. I want to thank all my committee members who talk up and answered. Thank you, Duran. Duran, we are voting on two of the last items on 96 South Street, the Tin Building, and 226 Front Street. None of us have any trouble with them. Take my word for it. Vote yes. <laughs> or, or, oh, or and fourteen wall. Or and fourteen wall. Or, no, or, we or, know or. you read. You read all the information that was sent <laughs> out, and we just had a discussion about it. Well, we just wall. like your input, and your input is going to be positive, right? Yeah. Yes, Daron. It's fourteen wall, ninety six South Street, and two twenty six Front. Yeah. Okay. okay. The, the, the vote Kathy's was called. Right. Okay. Vote was called. That's We're right. done. Thank you all. <laughs> Thanks, Gerald. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Happy Thank anniversary. You. Okay. Yes. Happy anniversary. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.